Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome to another Friday. Welcome to another episode of Heavy Metallurgy number 94. Isn't that the same number that was last week? Or am I in a did I miss something? Did I did I uh stroke out that week? I don't remember. But uh um, I'm not sure. It's possible something's been misnumbered, but uh if so, we'll fix it up. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. How you doing, Alan? Doing pretty good. Been a busy week, but everything's been going pretty smoothly. How you doing, Marty? Doing good. Been a busy week. A lot of fun things going on behind the scenes. Um, before we get our guests on and chit chat a little bit more, I do want to run at the mouth for uh, just a couple minutes. If you'll all uh, endure this for one minute. Um, I just want to remind people we are also streaming on Twitch again. I don't know the benefits of doing this. I'm just doing it because it was available to do so. I set up a Twitch account. Look up Heavy Metallurgy on Twitch if you prefer that um, that streaming platform. Um, also, if you're just like a casual a casual viewer of this channel, it would be cool if you subscribed. It would help us out a bunch. We're trying to build up the uh, channel this year, and um, also if you're a fan of the show sharing episodes you like on your socials would also help us out so enough enough of the uh, uh pimping yeah. that out but um the, the real reason marty wants you to subscribe is i've promised that once we get to five thousand subscribers I, i'll live stream myself listening to halloween's chameleon which is one of the biggest abominations of an album ever recorded so he, he just wants to hurry up and get to the me suffering part on a, a live stream <laughs> you're, you're gonna come out the other side a a, a, a fan it won't be so secret no. either. everybody will no. It'll be like TJ eating his words on raw black metal, but he no see he just found an exception to the rule. He finally found a raw black metal band he liked. This, this isn't like that. I I know this album. I, I've been there before, and I'm going back. And by the end of it, I might not believe in anything and start listening to J-pop music or something. <laughs> K-pop <clears throat> or or, or K-pop. I, I think I'm more of a traditionalist. I think I'll stick to the J-pop. That's so leave the K-pop for the kids. Right. And also, I want to remind everybody that we've started um, an album review series. It's a little slow getting started, but the people that have watched them seem to like it quite a bit. Um, ourselves and people from other YouTube channels are stepping in to do reviews, uh, exclusive reviews for us on the channel, newer releases. So we'll be turning you on to some new stuff, hopefully, even with clips. Um, this past Monday, Kellen reviewed uh, Ranger from Finland, their latest album, Risen from the Ruins. Uh, Wednesday, we had an album club, as usual. Uh, Theory and Practice debut album, Third Eye Function. It was a good conversation. They always are. We have a good time. Mm -hmm. With those, that's starting to grow a little bit as well. Thank you for checking those out. This coming Monday, we're getting into next week already. There will be another album review. I have reviewed uh, Twilight Force from Sweden, symphonic power metal. The name of the album is At the Heart of Winter Vale. The whole entire uh, video, I said Winter Dale. So, you know. Professionalism. Yeah, professionalism. We're still <laughs> working on that just a little bit. but uh, Well, I, it's no big deal. Just redo it, Marty. How long could that take? I'm not redoing it. No, I, I did it five <laughs> times before I got something, <laughs> something suitable. So, yeah. The editing magic in five takes. That's where that's where I'm at with this. But uh, and we're gonna leave off with Wednesday. This Wednesday coming up, the Album Club. We will be discussing the amazing classic Lost Horizons, Awakening the World. So, um, that's the uh, show notes co going forward. Did you have anything you wanted to add, Alan, before we bring these gentlemen on? I don't think so. Just uh, wanted to say hello and thank you. The chat's filling up. Uh, really cool to see a lot of the regular folks and some new folks as well. Hope everyone's had a good week and Ms. Ray, just to take it easy. Grab yourself a drink. Grab yourself a snack. Hang out for a while. We'll have some fun here. We've got uh, one returning guest and one guest that we've been meaning to have for a long time. And uh, it's been far too long, but we finally are bringing him on. So Marty, do the honors and get those guys out of the dugout, please. Well, let's get the new guy on here first. Well, uh, the other guy's a veteran at this point. He can sit back and sniffle and snot because he's not feeling so well. So he's a little under the weather. But um, Devin from Maze of Torment YouTube channel. How you doing, man? Good. How's it going? Good. Good. Uh, thanks for coming on. It's good to have you finally. No problem. Absolutely. Yep. Folks are, should be familiar with Devin's channel, but if you're not, he shows off lots of cool stuff. He's got an absolutely insane collection of vinyl, especially black metal, but other stuff too. Lots of good stuff over there. 
So what's been going on with the channel, Devin, for people that may not be aware of you? Uh, is there a link in the description for? Yes, there is. Right on. Yep, I saw that. So there's a link for Devin in the description. What are you trying to accomplish with your channel? Uh, I guess just show off all of this, but it's going to take a while because I can decide to start over again. So I'm at the, I think, midway through the sea, so I got a lot left to go. But after that, I'll probably go to tapes and then cds and then we'll see what happens after that yeah you've been kind of slowly marching your way through the collection which is uh yeah pretty cool and pretty fun uh-huh. right on our next guest is longtime friend of the show designed the logo for us and rick from the dreadful minutes welcome back i'm sorry you're not feeling well i'm gonna power through this um i gotta say Devin, you're insane for going just attempting this. <laughs> you with Classy Lonnie. <laughs> well, think about it if Necrotic Nick did it. And this is my Creed album. Yeah. And this is my other Creed um, album. <laughs> oh, harsh. <laughs> right? So, Rick, what's been going on over? I know you've been a super busy man. Um, you just had a gonna... video go up today, was it, uh, Rick, or yesterday? Recently. Um, I don't know. I'm planning some more live stuff. Um, trying to pop in a regular video here and there. I may not do a collection update video this month, so this is perfect. I think a what's spinning thing maybe uh, <laughs> kind of a nice way to kind of fill that gap, kind of show off a little bit of what's been hitting my ears uh, for the. I mean, this is a weird in between time because like it's the beginning of the year. Some things have not dropped yet. You know, we've had some releases, but again, it's only we just started f- February, and you know, it's it's a short month, but. I think when March hits, especially late March, that's when things are going to start to get really interesting again once mm. we hit the spring cycle. So it's uh, there'll be plenty to talk about. But for now, you know, just kind of hitting the old stock and, you know, and stuff I haven't listened to in a while. So I, I got to say the the what's spinning um, episodes, see, they, they feel cheap, but they're they're actually kind of cool. They're fun. And. Alan and I needed a break from all the homework, I think, because <laughs> we've got, just, yeah. yeah, we got some pretty labor intensive, uh, streams coming up here in the coming month and a half. So, um, some big yes, discographies to work our way through. That is for sure. But yeah, this is fun though, too, because you just get to show off the random stuff that doesn't necessarily fit into a topic particularly well at any given time. Yeah. But yeah, you're always listening to stuff in the background or checking out some new things or just spinning something on the commute. So yeah, it's fun to uh, fun to kind of summarize those and kind of go back over them in your mind before they get put back on the shelf. Yep. But uh, we might as well get started. I've got, a, I don't know, 15 or 20 or something like that, things to go through. Um, Devin's, Devin's the fresh blood. We'll start with him first. Jeff wants to know if your list is going to be plagiarized or not. <laughs> Let's find out. <laughs> All right. Since you said at the heart of something, let's start with this. Ah. I haven't spun that one a while. It's so good. Classic. Great, great album. It's good, but Adam's guitar playing is kind of sloppy on this one. Like, I wish it was kind of like he's playing, I think, above his ability speed wise on this album. Like, there's some spots you can tell he can't play quite this fast, but. He was definitely a better drummer than guitarist, but after this, the three albums, I think, what is it? Damned in Black, Sons, and All Shall Fall are kind of hit or miss, but I like the new album. But apparently they're doing a new one, but they keep arguing about the band and some other drama stuff, but yeah. I heard that Horg was trying to take the name or something away from Demon Oz, and there's another lawsuit, or I don't know. I don't, I don't want to put it out there. It's just crap here on the internet, but... It seems like those guys are just, I don't know. I don't get it. Well, apparently he got fired from hypocrisy too, so. Did he quit or did he get fired? I think he got fired. Huh, interesting. Because I saw them last year. He wasn't on the kit. They had some other guy. Huh. Right? So this is arguably where they, uh, let me see. I think after this, they became kind of more thrashy, like a little bit. Like, they didn't really have that in the early stuff. Like, the first record's definitely more Bathory influenced. But this one, and especially Suns, were kind of like their black thrash record. But 
they they kind of simplified their sound a little bit after that record. I do like I did like All Shall Fall. I thought that was a good album. Kind of a uh, step back in time a little bit. Mm-hmm. But that album, wow! Not one. It's a it's a little sloppy in the playing, but the riff the riff writing is great. Great riff album. My favorite's Pure Holocaust, but this one probably has the best artwork. Now I love that cover. Yeah, it's yeah, very cool. It is awesome. And yeah, so, I agree. Pure Holocaust is uh, definitely number one. Though I hate the LP color; it doesn't match at all, which kind of bugs me. Oops, sorry, Alan. No, that is a weird color no, for it. Yeah. Looks like baby puke, so I don't. Know I hate it when album <laughs> when vinyl does not color does not match the aesthetic of the that just a pet pet peeve of mine. It's, yeah, it's I, like I, when Cindy shows up to the dance and her purse doesn't go with her shoes. I was like, oh my god! I <laughs> I have the first ancient album on LP. And it's on a yellow. <laughs> is that the, the new really reissue that's come out, or is it an older press? No, that's from a few years ago. Okay, I just saw record. that they had gotten I, reissued recently. No one talks about that album, and it's great. That Svartalheim, great album. Yeah. It sounds like a mortal kind of. Yeah, it's it's awesome classic Nor- Norwegian black metal that everybody disregards because they got really goofy as they went. Yeah, along. they became like a wannabe credible filth. Little, Pretty much. Yeah, that that vampire album did not sit well with a lot of folks. So uh, the, the the previous work kind of got uh, left by the wayside as well. Yeah. Yeah, favorites on this one probably where dark and light don't differ or the title track, but yeah. Good record, but not one of my favorites. Right on. Good yeah. good start to the to the thing. Uh Rick, you're next. You know, when I get people coming over and we're not really like vinyl collectors, and you know, I'll show off a few things. People generally are curious. And uh I usually have to pull out the colored vinyl. And you know, I get the whole like, oh, that's pretty. Yeah. Oh, isn't that I'm nice? Kidding. All this stuff, but at least the vinyl's pretty. It's such yeah. a nice album. He's that's such fun. a nice boy. I, I do get that a lot. Why you does know he have a box full of disassembled baby doll parts underneath his bed? <laughs> so yeah, I pretty much figured it out. I'm like, that's pretty much where I have to go because I can't talk about the music. No, nobody did do this stuff. <laughs> so uh, you know, I decided to do something a little different uh, for a first showing. I'm gonna just kind of um. Just uh, plug Josh Josh Keish, uh, Warrior in the Clouds Part One. So a YouTuber, uh, some uh, uh, member of the VC, and um, really really uh, talented guitar player. And uh, so he's got this he's got this uh, I guess I don't know what he's calling an EP on his Bandcamp. I talked about this on my channel before, and uh, it's uh, it's all instrumental, and it's kind of um you you can tell it's very very DIY. Which I still kind of encourage, like if people in NBC, if you all like got, you know, musical talent. I mean, definitely, uh, and, and I like the support that's been going around, and and I know a lot of channels have been talking about, uh, you know, this and kind of plugging his stuff. It's again, it's it's got a lot of varied styles, which I thought was very interesting. Uh, you know, it's it begins with sort of like a like a speed metal, you know, then a heavy metal kind of thing. This that song "Die," it's very Metallica ish. Uh, Faded feelings is probably the most like. I guess melodic uh, one he's got here, Society Inc. Uh, this one here has a more of a, a more of the crossover kind of sound, and then this last one here has a more of a testament <laughs> kind of kind of feel. So, like I said, I, I, the thing that I like about it, it's the thing that kind of would I would criticize about it too, and that is that for the next thing, I would love to see something a little more stylistically, a little more focused. You know, it's kind of all over the place, um, but yeah. Definitely uh, check it out. Uh, it's I think he said he's got something else cooking, so looking forward to see um, what he does. But yeah, Josh, if you're watching, man, this is it's pretty good. Okay, let me get Alan up here. Okay, um, I'll start with this because I've been playing this a lot for the past couple of weeks. Um, it's in the mood for. Morbid Angel, Gateways of Annihilation. An uh, album I hadn't listened to in forever, but found a cheap CD copy, so picked it up, and yeah, I've been spending a lot. Very, very good album. Uh, I like this one a lot. It's not going to be my favorite, but I feel like it's really representative of everything they had done up to this point. You know, It's got some of the slow songs. It's got some of the cool, sick, weird riffage on it. Um. It just feels like you know a very solid all-around Morbid Angel album. If you like anything they've done up to this point in their catalog, there's going to be songs on here that you're going to like. 
So yeah, solid offering. You know, Tucker's very settled into the band at this point. The unit feels really tight. Um, you know, for me, Morbid Angel is always kind of at their best. Yeah, when they you know, are going a little slower. Really like Sandoval's drumming on this one. He he's always good, but you know, he really just you know lays down those really steady, just you know, flattening beats uh, across all these songs. So yeah, it's been fun checking this one out, paying more attention to it for the first time in ages, and cool to have a hard copy of it for probably the first time. I don't think I ever had this one, even back in the CDR days. So nice to have it on the shelf, and uh, that's the first thing I've been checking out. In the mood for a little Morbid Angel. That's probably one of my favorite al this. album covers, too, um, when, it, when it comes to the Morbid Angel stuff. I just love it. Yeah, it, it is a cool cover and a... Uh, it's cool when it folds out too. It's an unusual one for Seagrave, kind of in terms of the color or uh, pattern and such. But uh, yeah, very it's cool. a neat, a, a very neat one from him, and uh, just a little atypical with all the sort of more like earth tones and stuff going on instead of the usual, you know, maybe darker blues and greens. I gotta say, I'm with Tom on this. Um, the uh... When that came out, I was a little disappointed, but it, it was a grower. Over time, I put it back on, and I it totally clicked with me. Heretic okay. is the one I just can't. Well, the one after that too is not very good either. I was, was going to say. <laughs> I was going to yeah. Heretic sounds like freaking Altars of Madness compared to the uh, Illu <laughs> Diamond Illu of Man's Anus. Yeah, that one <laughs> exactly. Yeah, they 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 have uh, peaks and valleys in their catalog. I think that's fair to say. Yep. But uh, yeah, th this one's a very strong album, uh, and I think Marty, a lot of people had that same experience where I don't remember people being that crazy about the album at the time of release. But it seems to get a lot more love and respect in the catalog these days. Yeah. All right, All right. Mister. Well, you I'm gonna do something a little sure. different and start off with something that I don't like. Okay. <laughs> I uh, decided cool. to cir circle back around to this album this week, and um, it's still boring and overrated. New Razor. Uh, what the hell is this called? Cycle of Contempt. Man, this is... Uh, some of their stuff is kind of hit or miss for me, but this album is a definite uh, step down in quality. I mean, it's it's decent enough thrash. It's It's got the old spirit to it. The songs just get a little long, and every song is about how the singer is going to beat your ass or don't cross me or whatever. Step up or you'll get smacked down type garbage. There is just not a lot of dynamics or um, interest on this for me. I've spun it a good four times now. It's going to go in the uh, VCLT pile to some to some uh, unsuspecting fool who deserves a beatdown. <laughs> and also, before I jump off here, I do want to share one thing here. Um, our friend Aaron, who is a metal theologian, he has a he put out one record some years ago, and he finally just got it up on Bandcamp. I'm going to put a link in the description or a link in the um, chat. Madhouse is the uh, name of the band. It's like demo material, I think. Aaron, correct me if I'm wrong. They're a German band. It's an old, it's an old school uh, German band, not around anymore. He released the vinyl, really nice marbled vinyl with a DIY type of cover. Very cool, good stuff. If you watch any of Aaron's uh, content, you know the kind of stuff he's into, and he likes the the obscure stuff and. Um, I know Jurgen's a fan of Madhouse as well. I've got the record. It's fun. It's a good listen. If you're into old school metal stuff, definitely go click on the link in the uh, chat. And uh, he'll be on uh, next Friday. Anyway, is that correct? That's what we've got on the schedule. Yes, Aaron will be we'll talk, we'll week, talk so. more about. We'll talk more yeah. about it then. But I did want to share the link now. If people have a few extra dollars rolling around their pocket and want some cool, obscure metal, Aaron has got a... Uh, some copies left from some years ago and he's finally getting it up to be sold on the internet. So check it out. Very cool. Yeah. A All lot right. of folks seem to be sharing your opinion on a uh, razor, not too impressed with that one question for folks. Uh, I've not heard this album in a long time. The way you describe it, Marty, in terms of just being, you know, every song's about we'll kick your ass, blah, blah, blah. I remember shotgun justice having that kind of vibe around it. Is that yeah accurate or am I, 
misremembering. That that album though has got a lot of piss and vinegar to it. It it is kind mm-hmm. of the same thing, but it's got a good intensity. This is just it's been done. They've done well, it time and time aren't, again. Aren't they all like basically a bunch of grandpas by now. Like the idea of them kicking your ass is not. Yeah, something. I mean they're they're uh, tough grandpas. I mean, let's take a look. <laughs> So, Rick, you're saying instead of saying, we'll kick your ass, they should be shouting, get off my lawn? It's, there you go. <laughs> Cowboy hat's always a good choice. Howdy. <laughs> Y'all better get off my land now, you hair. Uh, kick your ass, partner. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I mean, cheers to them. They got back together. They're still doing it. And they still, you know, from an old thrash standpoint, they still they they, they, they know what to do. It's It's hard hitting. It's just... I mean, even if this came out in the late 80s, early 90s, it would still be kind of a, a very so-so album for me. But anyway, Devin, you're up next. I don't like the vocal way. they. It sounds like they clipped the vocals kind of odd, like, like they're done like kind of shittily. But musically, it's okay, but the vocals kind of really annoy me. Right People are having way too much fun with the Razor album in the chat right now. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of fun to comments there. So this band, maybe you know, Marty? Yeah, I've heard of them. <laughs> maybe once or twice. Yep. So if you're not into Voivod, this is maybe the one that you would have the biggest chance to actually get into. It's along with Andrew Rath, they're most normal, but it's still Voivod, so it's still kind of odd sounding. But if you go through the discography, it's a very confusing musical journey. You're like, what? Is this the same band basically from album to album? So, but... Mm-hmm. Honestly, maybe my favorite by them is either this or Killing Technology, but this is more of like a what, like progressive hard rock kind of. It's kind of them, kind of returning to form a little bit. I mean, they did they never went back to Dimension, Hatros, or anything before that. But I would that, argue, that I would is, argue is the new one has a little bit of that. Oh yeah, the the new one definitely. The new one sounds like it could have came out after Nothing Face or between dimension and nothing face it would have been a good bridge for that one but that record is really good i do really like angel rat when it came out i hated it i was so mad but uh, i like it now because i'm old and apparently more angel uh, rat was my first one so i have a little bias there you'll uh, always yeah age. <laughs> you'll never forget your first rick <laughs> it was a good day she was an angel and a rat. <laughs> so the They've announced another U.S. tour, second U.S. tour in a row with no West Coast dates, so thanks, Voivod. Oh, there will be. They'll add Hopefully. more. Though they're playing with Imperial Triumphant, it's kind of an odd mix. They always they always play with weird bands. <laughs> I think in England they're doing Testament and Exodus, which that would have been awesome to see, but mm, nice. we'll see. So, yeah. It doesn't have the 3D glasses, unfortunately. I wish it did, but close this one though. Say. all right oh you're still okay i was sorry i was looking at the chat again another album uh album vinyl that has nothing to do with the cover no, it matches the logo kind oh of. okay kind of oh. all right <laughs> what they <laughs> needed to do is to red half of it red and half of it blue to match the 3d glass effect exactly well, that would have been cool do. that would have been cool favorites on this one probably lost machine or we are not alone but yeah you know what would have been cool is you see these uh, records that like have stuff pressed in the center of them. They could have put the 3D glasses in the vinyl and made it a crystal clear vinyl. You had to hold the vinyl up to your eyes to look at the artwork. <laughs> that would be, that would have been a cool idea. Maybe not. Maybe not. I'm just spitballing here. I'm trying to try you know new marketing things. I could get into that. That'd be it'd be unique. <laughs> All right, Rick, you are up next. Try not to cough on us. Uh, th- this is a reissue I've been actually pretty excited about. When Nameless Grave put this out, and this is a melodic death metal out of Japan. So, uh, death symbolism, banquet in the darkness. Mm. Uh, so I picked up the debut. I think Sura put it out last year. Uh, so I nabbed that on CD. Quickly sold out, and I'm like, and I've been wondering about the uh, the follow up. And uh, when I saw this was uh, thrown up there, so I pretty much snagged that. Now, well, talking about color, l- l- let's see. It's just, it's just a little better. So we got this little gold kind of thing happening here. It's it's not too bad. Well, no, that's that, pretty good. That went, 
I think this was the only option too. So you, you pretty much were stuck with, with with the gold, as far as I'm, as far as I know, at least what they were offering at the time. Uh, but man, this is um, I love the debut, but this is probably my favorite one, and it's just kind of a, it kind of hits that. You think of the melodic parts of the carcass, you know what I mean? It's got um, this is like this is like death death metal of the highest caliber. Like this is just um, it's got very mem memorable hooks and you know it's just um. Again, it is not a band I, I see mentioned all that much. But, they uh, sound kind of like mid two thousands dismembered to me. There's a little bit of that, yeah. This, this, they're a little bit all over the place uh, when it comes to, and that's kind of what I like about them. Usually, that's a kind of a criticism, but I, I like their approach because they because they know how to they know how to make it work. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, would you like is, would you like a, a, a an excerpt from Marty's art corner? Uh, let's critique that cover together, shall we? Hold up the cover, Mar Marty the art critic. Uh, yeah, uh, early appearance. If I want to say one thing. This took me a little while to get used to. I'm looking at the. Um, are, are you are you are you talking about that? You're not talking about you're not talking about the uh, the feathers up here, right? I, I I'm talking about 1995 called and they want their corral drawback. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's uh, what was it? 2003. Yeah, it's it's very it's it's not even 2003. It's like kind of late 90s. Yeah, know? it's, it's late, late 90s. 90s it's got I the, can uh, do art. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty bad. Yeah. And again, don't judge a book by its cover. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> this is good shit. Sometimes bands make it hard. Yeah. They make it hard not to judge it by a cover. Yep. Uh, it's good advice, Rick. But yeah, they don't. <laughs> Some bands really. No, really I'm not vinyl, but you know, I'm, I'm stuck with this blown up, you know, version of this. I, I wish. You know how like they re they redo the the artwork. This would have been a good candidate for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and they didn't go with it. <laughs> all right yeah the uh, our, our resident artist genius is not impressed here <laughs> <laughs> what's up mark that it does look like a day yeah, someone was else mentioned dave mckean with that kind of art recently and uh yeah <clears throat> trying to trying to copy his style that's ambitious let's leave it at that okay alan hmm Okay, well, I revisited an album over the past couple of weeks. Never could quite get into this band before, but I still had it on the shelf. So I figured it's, eh, let's, it's been, I don't know, however many years. Let's give it one more chance. This time it finally kind of sunk uh, sunk in and stuck a bit. Um, talking about the first Nile album, Among the Catacombs of Nephrim Ka. Uh, before, my impression of this was is that it was a little too brutal for my tastes. Um, it, there's a certain level of brutality I don't mind in death metal, but once you cross that line, I just lose interest. The more you know, brutal stuff's just not my style. And yeah, this one always just struck me wrong. It was got you know that very intense you know hammering uh, you know drums and such that was a little bit of a wall for me, but been giving it more spins paying a little more attention to it and yeah i've actually got to the point where i'm enjoying it you know the songs are more diverse than they seem at first appearance basically it's just a matter of you know, get through this pummeling wall and there's a lot of you know interesting ideas going on the songs aren't too long they're reasonably varied it's their first album they're you know trying out a few of the little sort of egyptian eastern sounding uh bits here and there uh, with you know some intros and instrumentals, uh, it's a pretty short, compact album. At the same time, it's got good lead work. Uh, so yeah, uh, finally, it's taken a long time, but finally, I can give this you know a uh, a thumbs up and feel like I finally got my head wrapped around this one, uh, which is kind of cool. And here's now something folks can help me out with. I don't know anything about the rest of the band's discography, and my understanding is this one kind of stands alone that after this they started doing some different things not bad but that the sound kind of changes i know they have some lineup changes along the way too so do i need to explore deeper in their catalog should i just be happy with this one and call it a day are there things to avoid or obvious progressions if i want to check out more nile what do folks think so there's one thing i noticed people that don't seem to be the big Nile fans seem to like this record, though. That's a good record. Which one is that? Dither Dither Dark and Shrines. Okay. I've noticed that one, yeah. Seems to get a lot of positive buzz. I have an unpopular opinion when it comes to my favorite, though. My favorite is actually... 
That's a really good record too. Yeah, yeah. Which Impa one's that? Impophallic. Uh, Impophallic, yeah. Impa okay. Yeah. yeah, sorry, I don't know them by cover art. Really intense. I mean, their latest albums are. I I really don't think they put out any bad. I mean, the older albums are a little more <laughs> traditional death metal. As they went on, they got a lot more complex, a lot faster. The 2013 one was kind of. Yeah. Still not yeah. terrible though. I mean, no. but those two that you showed are definitely worth checking out. They're very good records. Okay. I'm going to go with another one here that step up above the razor. This one, I have to blame the YouTube metal community for ranting and raving about it for about a three week cycle. And then it dried up. No one talked about it ever again. <laughs> um, Benedictions, spheres, scriptures. I'm sorry. Scriptures. Um, I got it when all the hype was around it. The last thing I bought from them was transcend the Rubicon. I love that record. I think it's their best. This is okay. When I listen to him, like this is okay. It's average. Listening to it again here the other day, I spun it twice in a row. It's better than I remember it. Is it as amazing as everybody was saying? Nah, probably not. But it is definitely the best record they've done <laughs> since Transcend, I think. So um Dave Ingram's back in the band at this point and sounding really good. It sounds like Benediction. It sounds the way it should. It's heavy, it's well produced. Yeah. Cool. Every song kind of sounds exactly the same, though. Benediction. It's a benediction. I, I bought it because of the hype too, and yep, it was okay. I'll stick with the grand level of, of the folks that we. Yeah. Hmm. All right, Rick. You have no sound. I don't want y'all to. There you know, go. My, my, my coughing and sneezing and <laughs> all that nice stuff. <laughs> um. Anywho, so this is a band out of Philadelphia, and they released this last year. So Black Line put this out, and they're very strange. They had a very weird evolution. So it's kind of even they started out with a little bit more of a hardcore kind of sound with black metal elements, and now they kind of went full kind of balls out experimental and proggy uh, with with their approach. It's not for everybody, uh, but if this is your thing. And you like a little bit of um, prog proggy elements in your your black metal. It's this band called. Oops. I skipped uh, Devin. Go ahead. Don't matter. We'll get him on the road. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> we'll get you next, Devin. I I I, I jumped the tracks. That's how foggy headed I am. I didn't even notice. I didn't notice either. Um, I'm trying to pay attention to um, comments and yeah. So uh, it's it's Iat I A T T Magnum Opus. And uh, again, like I said, they've, they've had a very interesting evolution uh, with their sound. They've hit this point now where I'm kind of wondering where they're going to go from here. It's um, very interesting uh, for Black Lion uh, to have something like this on there. They have a lot of interesting things. But this right here, it's kind of, um, like I said, if you like your stuff with a little more experiment in their sound. Uh, however, uh, I would say tread, tread, tread with caution because uh, there is one track in here that does have sax uh, or boros. So if that's not your thing, uh, just skip that track. <laughs> but uh, other than that, I mean, there's you hear, you, hear, you hear elements of violin, a lot of very interesting keys going on um, along. Like, again, there's a lot of different stuff going on with the style. Very, very interesting listen. It's definitely worth spending at least once kind of checking them out. I, I enjoyed this a lot. I like this a lot, a lot better than their, their last release. But um, again, how, how to plug them. They're from my old home city. You know, uh, being being out, being out of Philly, but very cool. You know, I've been buying a lot of Black Line stuff lately. Uh, they've been doing these fifty percent off sales, and uh, it's it's like a little too often. So I wonder what's going on over there. So I I've kind of been going through their um, through their through their catalog. Just the one track, uh, <laughs> and it doesn't go all kind of it doesn't go Imperial Triumphant. Like it's it's a little more tasteful. So yeah. Uh, Ayat, I A T T, Magnum Opus. Yeah, it's never heard of them. You're the king of showing emperor. things I've never heard of. It's amazing. I love it. Uh, and dissection. There's a little bit. Of, yeah, there's a little bit of everything in here. Again, hmm. pretty, yeah, Rick always good. Rick always has the the cool obscure stuff. It's obscure, but it's always good stuff too. It's it never turns out to be like you know you know oh that's just not 
<laughs> cool at all. You listen to it, it's like this was. Now I have to buy more things. This is this is one of the the ones I, I did pre order. So I did like the last one, but uh, I didn't realize it was going to be so experimental uh, this time around. They really pushed the envelope. But it's gonna it's gonna test some people. If you like your stuff a little more traditional, you know, a little more stripped down, it, these guys kind of went <laughs> went all out the other direction. Hmm. Hmm. So, all right, Devin. Sorry, no problem. So I see Simon's in the chat. So we can begin the midnight oil deep dive now. <laughs> <laughs> yep, in so excess. This... We'll do in excess next week. In excess midnight oil and ACDC. Men at work. He knows all those guys that way. Yeah, and Blood Duster. We got to throw Blood Duster in there too. <laughs> and the Bazooka. Yep. So this is just an EP from this band. I've never seen anybody show this particular release by this band. I'm not sure why, but. So this came out the same year that, that they did Litany, but it's definitely closer to the next album because they slowed down a little bit on this one. <laughs> Simon. So this is has the side A is three songs, and they cover Total Disaster from Destruction, Rapid Fire from Judas Priest, an odd choice, but okay, then Freezing Moon, and then th two live songs, and then two bonus tracks, but yeah. Not mandatory, but if you're a completist and you want to get all of the beta stuff, definitely a cool release. And one of the last things was Doc on drums. But huh. no, another guy taken by addiction, I guess. Yep. This is another one of those bands I still need to dig into. I just don't know their catalog. So this came out, I think, in late 2000, because I know Litany was the same year, but definitely closer to, say, Revelations than Litany, style-wise. A lot, Not a lot slower, but definitely has some more mid-paced songs in this one. So yeah. Vader, which is called Rain Forever World. Good stuff. Right on. Alan. Okay. Uh, did somebody say ACDC? Oh, no. <laughs> Uh, there, there's, there's a reason for this. Um, found this recently, and as you can tell, there's something odd about it. It's a two-on-one CD. It, it's a boot pressing from the early 2000s. And they did this weird series where they would pair one Bon Scott album with one Brian Johnson album and put them on a single disc. And it's kind of funny because they even you know, went out of their way to make the discs look like Atlantic record pressings. But uh, to my knowledge, these are completely unofficial. So yeah, this one has a TNT and for those about to rock, we salute you. I found it in a used bin. I'm like, eh, yeah, I don't necessarily need that, but you don't necessarily stumble across interesting looking ACDC bootlegs in the used bin all that often. So I went ahead and picked it up. Yeah, TNT is a fun album. It's obviously very early and very primitive, even by their standards, but I like a lot of the songs on it. Never cared that much for the, um, those about to rock. The title track is fun. We've all heard it a million times, but beyond that, there's not a ton of tracks on that album that ever stuck with me very much. So um, I really do wish this had like the color scheme for TNT in the background and just the little cannon in the corner i was gonna but, say uh, we've been bitching about color matching but at least it matched the background to that to that I, they no? they did that yeah but yeah and i think the way they did this series all of them i think they're chronological so i think you can get one that has high voltage paired with back in black and then you get one that's got <laughs> dirty deeds paired with whatever the third um 80s album is is that flick of the switch yeah. i don't even remember the order fly those on came the out wall in. fly on the wall it, might, like it was either record. flick of the switch or fly of the wall yeah one of those two um, so yeah, um, I like the TNT album fine. It was an interesting bootleg in the used bin. So I picked it up. I've spun it a couple of times this week. It'll be a long time before I spend the second half again, but TNT is something I can listen to from time to time. So, but since, uh, yeah, Devin mentioned ACDC figured we'd go ahead and get that one out of the way. <laughs> Poor Simon is, uh, eyes are turning in his head when as soon as you pull that up <laughs> I, I can only imagine I, I do get it i can only imagine being from australia and having to put up with you know 40 million wankers from around the world oh you're from australia do you know the guys from acdc that that has to just be the bane of their existence so uh, 
I feel for you, Simon, and uh, the, the rest of the stack is 100% ACDC free tonight, I promise. All right. Um, this has been a fun one to listen to while I'm working. This is War Collapse with Defy on Profane mm -hmm. Existence Records out of Minnesota. It's a DB crust, crusty band. Not super crusty, but there's a definite DB vibe to the hardcore on this really metal edged there's some grit and dirt in the distortion some heaviness um guttural yelled vocal style not setting the world on fire with originality but this is a fun energetic uh trying to get work done type of uh album all right Laz, just ordered the madhouse that's one anybody else let's do this Someone, uh, someone else, I think Metal Mayhem 777 mentioned he had picked it up. I don't know if he picked it up tonight or recently, but he bought it as well. Awesome. Good. Yeah. So, Marty, you, you say that's D-Beat. Is it like just traditional discharge D-Beat or a different It's flavor? in that vein. I've only listened to it like twice, and it didn't really stand out as being super exceptional other than just solid, well done, um, crusty hardcore. Okay. Yeah. Um, check them out. They're, it's a fun, good listen. I've been getting into the crust stuff here and there, buying records here and there. When uh, Eric and uh, Pat turned me on to something that I'm missing, my buddy Jack as well. My crust collection is growing. I've always liked it. It's just now I'm starting to actually do something about it, which has ha been kind of fun. Have you heard Wolf Brigade? I have. Yeah. Good stuff. When my crust collection grows, my wife tells me it's time to do the laundry. <laughs> <laughs> oh you and you're making something for the collection right now <laughs> uh pretzels oh, yeah I, hey. I'll mute. <laughs> we've almost got 100 people in here everybody thank you for joining us tonight holy cow we do it's uh cool to have you all hanging out with us and um yes yeah lots of lots of folks in the chat are having a lot of fun tonight everyone seems to be in a pretty good goofy mood which is uh always nice to see too yep all right Devin, you're back does someone say German thrash metal? <laughs> Probably. Ah, there we go. <laughs> so, put this of the first three, this is my least favorite, but it does have so, a couple of my favorite early songs by them, like "Survive to Die" in the title track. But I, what's the second? The second record called? I forget. Not Infernal Overkill. Eternal Devastation. That album yeah. kind of doesn't sound that good. The guitar tone's kind of annoying. Like super thin, he has no balls to it, but super crispy. I would like that album more if it had this sound to it, but I think after you can kind of hear the change in a little bit, but still good record though. But let me show this one. This one doesn't seem to get as mentioned as much as the first two, but it's still good though. But yeah, I prefer the first two. Obviously, a thousand times better than Human Cannonball, whatever the fuck. I don't know what they were thinking. <laughs> Didn't you yeah. see them on that tour, Marty? The no, Human Cannonball. I, the only time I've ever seen Destruct... Oh, I saw them on the, the Human Cannonball, yeah. And then I saw them with Schmier, the when they reunited um, All Hell Breaks Loose, their comeback, Schmier's comeback album. They were great. There were three pieces. It was Schmier, Mike, and some other drummer. It was awesome. It was a great yeah, show. Yeah, I saw them last year, and they played... I think two songs from Antichrist and everything else was all old stuff, so that was awesome. Yeah, all right. It's yeah. it's never a good sign when these bands do like this cover where it looks nothing like their old stuff. It's just like it's like that one and two album, you know. It, oh it's no, like with the dog on it. <laughs> Same difference. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. All right, Rick. Uh, so a lot of you know. Uh, so. Um, Mr. Grounds Zero Pat uh, has a store, so um, bought a few things. And I did too. It's uh very very tempting, and his price is very reasonable, and it's just like you know thought I'd support too. But he had one item in particular I was very excited about, and uh, because I didn't have it, that was the the, the debut from Fulci. Uh, that was the um, opening the the Hell Gates. So hmm. it's on tape. I'm a bit of a tape aficionado too, which is cool and i think it works really well for this format <laughs> great band out of italy um so lo love this album i mean they're 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 band does, does no wrong in my eyes um so yeah it's a maggot something 
So, but this is a ridiculous, ridiculously long. <laughs> wow, yeah, yeah. Gay card, look at that. But I love how they have the, uh, man, they do that soundtrack thing with the movie thing. They, have, they go all the way with that. <laughs> That's funny, yeah. Uh, I don't know if you guys were aware, but they got something coming out this month, uh, later this month. It's like a, it's like some kind of soundtrack. Uh, so it's kind of like, it's supposed to be this DVD with a seven inch uh, of some sorts. Uh, it's called the um, Tropical Sun, the short movie. So I'm definitely going to be on the lookout for that, but I'm very curious about it. But this was, this seems like something that, you know, it de definitely um, fits the Fulci, uh <laughs> the Fulci theme, but great band. And um, again, thanks, Pat. So get snagged it right away. <laughs> All right, everybody, I'm going to put a link in the chat for Pat's new distro, groundzerosalem.com. Go check him out. He's got some cool stuff, new distro, good prices. People in yep. the chat are saying that they buy from him. Rick has, Devin has. I haven't yet, but I will. Um, yeah. He's got some crust, too, there, Marty. I know. <laughs> I, need to, I need to hit him up and have him guide my hand on that. But um, all right, Alan. Did someone say GroundZeroSalem.com? <laughs> uh, yes, I have also been ordering some stuff from Pet, and uh, one of the things I got from him was Napalm Death's Scum. Didn't have a copy of it. Hadn't heard it in quite a while, but uh, yeah, he had it for, like Brick said, really good price. He got it to me in like two days. Now, granted, we're not that far away, but it was literally like I placed the order wednesday and i think he got it to me friday or yeah same here like it's crazy on my doorstep i was like that can't be that can't be the package i just, I just ordered same here i was just like i don't know who this is from because i don't really have much ordered right now and it can't be pats and there's a like, eh, eh, that's yeah. from uh oh. that's from his neck of the woods that must be pats it came so. about the same amount of length as uh a song on side two of that <laughs> <laughs> yep yep didn't have too far to go but uh yeah you know most folks of course know this now Grind, I, I, I am you, know, you know, a blind, crippled, helpless child in the woods. I, I don't know that genre at all, but I, I know Napalm Death, and I kind of like this one. Just hadn't ever got around to picking up a copy. Um, everyone knows the deal, of course, on this one that you know the first and second halves are essentially completely different lineups of the band yeah. recorded at different times and just got smashed together uh, for the release. Um, I don't know what people's opinions of this are. I really like the first 12 tracks, you know, the, the earlier recording session. Um, that of course, isn't the lineup that stuck around and went on to, you know, to bigger and better things. What do other folks think? Do folks like the first half, both halves? Do a lot of folks only like the second half with the, uh, the Lee Dorian lineup? I'm curious if, uh, I don't know if what the, uh, the consensus is on Napalm Death. What do folks in the chat think? What do you three guys think? To me, it feels like a split EP. That's what it feels like. I just get that vibe. It just has like a very different feel and vibe um, mm -hmm. both, both sides. Um, but depends on the day. Um, I've, I found myself kind of just spinning the first side a little more often than the second one. Uh, I don't feel too, I don't know. <laughs> the lead orient side is not exactly, I guess, my favorite one. Uh, it's okay, but I, I don't want to return to the album that often. Okay. Marty, Devin, he, what do y'all think? He's not a very good vocalist. Especially you can hear yeah. that in Cathedral. Hey, hey, hey. Well, hey. <laughs> he sounds like a Muppet. That's the Cathedral <laughs> album, though, man. That's, uh... <laughs> uh, for me, I... <laughs> not a popular opinion, but I think, I think that album is kind of cool for the spectacle of it. Hmm. I think it's cool for the um, groundbreaking... Granted, Mick Mick wasn't doing anything new. He was kind of, you know, emulating Japanese hardcore and other stuff for the blast beat. But I mean, there was some innovation there. I I don't know. I would I would listen to him from enslavement before I listen to that one. And even that yeah. one I would rather listen to later. Uh Napalm. Not their best. It's not, but it's cool. It's a cool star. I love the artwork. I think that's Jeff Walker from carcass did the artwork for that it's quite that a sounds right but somebody in the chat might be might can confirm and yeah, yeah it is a he did. Cool. with him i like the mentally murdered ep though the mentally murdered's cool um because they got more death metal sounding kind of on that one yep 
Yeah. All right. Let's. Oh, I guess I'm next. What's here? You're next, and you haven't bought anything from Pat, so you broke the chain. I know. I've just been trying not to. I've been. uh, I've been. I say I've been trying not to, but I've been losing my damn mind. Anyway, (laughs) um, this album is. Oh my god, I need to get out the light for this. Talk amongst yourselves. Uh, Afar Angathfark (laughs) is the name of the album. Oh, by uh, Emmy Emian Mule Mule. This oh yeah okay yeah. This is yeah. their third album, I believe. I got the other two on tape. Uh, this is really great summoning worship. To be honest, um, the guitars are really low in the mix, so it almost feels like a very well orchestrated high rent dungeon synth album but there are guitars there and black metal vocals so yeah i mean it's it's it sits alongside stuff like Kaladin brood and stuff like that it's just a, a very solid summoning worship album i love the color scheme on the front i love the artwork it's just a very cool release i've liked all three of their albums this uh, i got this from out of season out of maine it's a dungeon synth label but he handles a lot of black metal as well um Go hit up Kyle. He's got some good stuff as well. But yeah, this is their third album. Very enjoyable. If you like summoning, check these guys out. Yeah, that popped up in the like band camp recommendations a while back and sounded interesting, but I haven't circled back to it at this point. Okay, so what's the best summoning album? I've been meaning to give them another listen. Stronghold. I Mine. don't know about most people would pick Stronghold, I think. It's not my personal favorite, but there's nothing wrong with it. Not the first one. Don't get the first one. Yeah, don't get the first one. <laughs> <laughs> the first one happened. Um, it's more like Abigor, but not as good. Um, real Stronghold's drummer. fine. Dull Golder is good. Um, Minas- I like Dull Golder. It's probably uh, it's one I return to the most. A lot of people return. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, Let he- me- Myrtle heroes sing your, their, P- your People keep seeing record. Stronghold. Ben and Simon both has Stronghold, so. Yeah, it's one that a lot of folks would go with. But yeah, Let Mortal Heroes uh, Sing Your Fame is really good. That way it has a little different sound, but I like it. It works. Cleaner sound. Cleaner sound. Yeah. 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 Minus Morgul is really good, but it's it is awesome. a little simpler sounding. Uh, not quite as rich uh, as some of the later Chintzy stuff. synth sound, but it works so good. It's so, so yeah. catchy. Yeah. Yeah. E- even the more recent ones I like a lot. I know some people I think have got a little tired of them. They're one of the few bands or relatively few bands where I don't mind that they kind of stay within their idiom because they always make it sound really interesting. Yeah. We should do a dive on uh, summoning one of these days. That would be a fun one. That would be a very good idea. Why yeah, haven't yeah. we done that? We should have done that. Shame on us. Yeah. Well, we'll get to that. So who who out there is a big summoning nerd and wants to talk uh, like 10 albums that are eight hours long each and fight over pronunciation of Tolkien names. Yeah. Uh, send send your resume to that guy up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Hit me up. Must be fluent in Sindarin and uh, at least you know one dwarven tongue. Just don't ask me what movie it's from. I'll I'll say the name of the town wrong. Anyway, Winterdale. Winterdale. Get ready, Dude, everybody. My review is full of problems. It'll be They've fun, been flown so many times though. There's so many bands that sound like them. It's just like <laughs> when it comes to the sun summoning sound. Um, it, you know, I always like to go back to the the original. But <laughs> yeah, it, it is a case where you're right, Rick. There are more and more bands that are trying to do that. And while some of them are good, yeah, the, the only one I think that has come really, really close, you know, and being on that same level is the Caladan Brood album. So some, good. some of the others are OK, but they, they're always there's always a noticeable step down. It, it's not as easy to emulate that sound, is it? Uh, who who knew? Salt Lake City. <laughs> and yeah, that Caladan Brood album if you buy the vinyl it's got two uh summoning covers on it that are not on the cd and it mm. they sound exact to summoning it's amazing the amazing job they did on it so yep. definitely throw down for the vinyl it's a two lp set has two huge posters and two uh summoning tracks that i don't think either one of them are on the cd i that's what i heard so definitely check that out cal and brood mm. rule the wife is yelling at me from the corner. She says, quit uh, tempting me to spend money. <laughs> <laughs> spend money, Mel, and then come on the show and talk about it. It'll be great. <laughs> I, I've already, uh, she, she's already had to uh, chide Melanie in the chat tonight for making me spend money to buy that Celtic, uh, the Kirithungal uh, art book. 
<laughs> you, you and Melanie conspired against book. me on that one. It's a coffee table book. It's for the whole family. Anyway, it's, it's practically a coffee table. That thing is huge. <laughs> so you, you can't beat the price. That thing is. You, awesome. you really you couldn't. What no. a deal. You didn't. Only you the, didn't beat the price. It's only the four, it's only my fourth copy. <laughs> All right. Devin. So, so this one got reissued, I think, 2020. It definitely needed to. Yes, it did. You're absolutely right. These That's guys, I feel line. like they get compared to dissection, but they're more consistent and, you know, they didn't do any chaos. So there's also that. Or kill but, somebody. Yeah, that too, but oh well. The debut, I think, is my favorite because the debut is almost like death metal with the black metal edge, and this is, I think, the opposite. Like kind of like slightly black, or well, slightly death metal influenced black metal, but that's so. They have a couple albums. I think that's the only one I have. It struck me as being a lot more deathy than I thought it was going to be when I bought it. Maybe, but that's good. It's good stuff. Mm-hmm. The debut is my favorite though. But... It's quite thrashy too, which I like. And even though last record was pretty decent too, so yeah, good Swedish melodic black from I think ninety five. Yeah, sounds about right. Yep, good stuff. Yeah, Not for I mean, original, but you could definitely tell the second you hear it, you like, oh yeah, it's definitely from Sweden. Yeah, yep, yeah. An animated, very cool. That was one of those albums back then. I saw it advertised here and there, and wanted it really bad, and could never track it down. Nobody ever had it in stock. Uh, even I didn't even find it on distros at the time. So I was real happy when it got reissued. And a bunch of people who didn't know it did. They're like, why? Where is it? I'm like, oh, it's a century media. And I guess you missed your chance if you didn't see it. They usually don't disappoint. Um, they, they're kind of like necrophobic, you know, to me. It's like, uh, you know, another band I like. It's all, but usually interchangeable to me uh, depending on the day. But, you know, that's one of those bands. All right. Rick, you're up. Uh, funny uh, tie-in. So <laughs> you brought up Scum, Alan. And uh, so this is a recent pickup. And this is something that I actually had on my MP3 pool for, for a while. And I thought was kind of crazy. It's like Death Grind. It's a little, um, it's a short-lived band. I think they just released the two albums. So this is Prophecy of Doom. That album it, rules. This, yeah. It's, uh, again. Crust, it's got, crusty. It's, got the, it's crusty. It's crusty. Yep. Uh, it's got the dude who played on Scum <laughs> yeah. on there. Uh, uh, so acknowledge the Confusion Master. Which uh, is, you know, that nice barely legible font right there. Very political um, lyrics. But uh, yeah, and and I love I love the the vocals were a little jarring at first. The guy sounds like he's about to vomit. <laughs> yeah, they sing like, it through a pitch shifter or slightly with a delay. It's just it's cool. It's just a cool, dirty record. Um, some people make a complaint about the production on this. It's a, it was a little odd, but I think I think it fits. I, mm-hmm. I think uh, I agree for what they're trying to do, you know kind of like that really early carcass or something like that uh but yeah this is awesome and so this is you know i'm glad to see it reissued uh, again it's, i don't think it's been reissued since 1990 or something like that so i don't think a lot of people are um it's been on their radar just because it's been out of the you know the, the market but yeah good stuff and um definitely a classic and they were up there on, with, with the um those original uk bands you know doing this kind of thing so I've yeah, got an original press of that that I bought from Gene from Angel Corpse. Uh, it's partied yeah. on pretty heavily. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. But it's awesome record. Sounds good. I I like the production. I think it's it highlights the sloppy crustiness of it, and it just it just makes it nastier. I love it. Good stuff. Very much a product of its time. It, it's cool. Very cool. Yeah, man. I love it. <laughs> All right. Good pick. Good pick, Alan. All right. I mentioned this one in a video a while back, and uh, Rick, you and others had to kind of help me with the pronunciation, and I still don't think I'll get it right. Um, oh, yeah. Sumerlands? We're going to go with Sumerlands tonight, although everybody keeps saying it's, Summerlands. It's, it's Sumerian. That's why it's Sumerlands. Yeah. I had to look that up. And the problem is, I hear Sumeria also pronounced Sumeria. So it could be Sumeria to Summerlands or Sumeria to Sumerlands. And I, I, tomato, tomato, I don't, I don't know. There's only one M, so I feel really weird saying su- Summerlands. But I, I, and anyway, this one got a bit of buzz at the end of last year. It's 
their second album. They have a new vocalist. It's the guy from Magic Circle, I think, is his main band. Yeah. Um, and it's very much 80s metal worship in the vein. A lot of people compared it to Ozzy solo albums. It makes me think a lot of like uh, Dio solo material too, like Sacred Heart, Last in Line, you know, those kind of things. Really good vocals, really good hotshot guitar work. Songs are pretty catchy on it. It's a short, pretty compact album. Uh, it's been a bit of a grower. You know, first impression, I was a little underwhelmed, and that partially maybe just a result of it was getting a fair amount of you know praise from different channels and different folks. But um, yeah, I didn't have really strong expectations going. In. It was just the first couple of plays. I'm like, well, that sounds okay. I'm not quite sure I see what the huge deal is about, but. Yeah, it's grown on me. It's a very solid album. There's one track near the end. I think it's number seven that kind of falls a little flat. So, but then the last track is still good. It just so has that one little hiccup on it. But yeah, good stuff. If you're looking for something in that, you know, Aussie or Dio mid 80s kind of feel, this works pretty well. Uh, if I'm going to nitpick, uh, color scheme here, not great. You know, if you're going to have, you know, dark colored background, don't do your logo in a dark color makes it a little hard to see. We're already having trouble pronouncing it. Now you're making it hard to read. <laughs> and um, I don't know. I feel like this picture is centered all wrong. You've got the you know, flaming burned out car, but it's way down here at the bottom. So most of your focus, you know, in the center is just, you know, empty. It's the, it's the side of a big hill. Um, so you lose at least half a point for you know composition on this cover. I'm I'm not digging the artwork incredibly well, but uh, the the music is pretty cool. Uh, I did warm up to this one after a few extra listens, and uh, I don't think it's album of the year from 2022, but definitely deserves mention. It's a strong release. Do you get do you get Doc and vibes from that? I've I've heard that from a few sources. You're right, Rick. Some folks have mentioned Doc and ah. Uh, not a ton, to be honest. I think it's you know got that little extra bit of heft to it compared to Dokken. You know, it's not that far removed. It's not a crazy thing to claim. But again, I would put it you know much closer to you know the Dio branch of the family tree than the Dokken branch. Uh, that that would be like a couple of twigs further back down the branch. Sorry, I picture things in branching diagrams. It's the <laughs> biology and stuff, the fossils. The, the professor in you, yep. <laughs> yep. But um, but yeah, really good. It's kind of interesting. I was thinking about it. Not a there's a ton of bands doing the whole new wave of traditional heavy metal stuff in recent years. But a lot of them definitely go for more like, you know, the Judas Priest kind of worship. Uh, that yeah. vibe. Not a ton of bands necessarily target the you know, more popular Ozzy and Dio kind of stuff. So it is kind of neat to see a band tackle that and, you know, do their take on that. Uh, ben said that, uh, look at Alan putting into practice all the art critique he learned from Mark Riddick. I'm glad Ben picked up on that. Absolutely. I, uh, that was a cool and fun video. If anybody didn't watch that one that we did with Mark Riddick a few weeks ago, uh, yeah, it was really cool to see Mark stuff, and I'm putting it to you. So now we can have Alan, the art critic, as well. And I said in the response, thanks to Mark, we are both art experts now. Just ask us. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have any questions, Rick, you know, uh, and, and Mark's busy, just just get a hold of me or Alan. It'll be fine. We'll, yeah, let, you know, we'll, we'll let you know what's great and what's not great. <laughs> okay. We, we shall be the tastemakers of 2023's art uh, circles. <laughs> Okay, um, this is a, a who did it better situation for me. Uh, been sitting on these discs for a long time. Zoller sent them to me. Um, I'm finally getting around to listening to them. We've got uh, Rebellions, uh, Bringer of War, The Last Stand, Brazilian Fast Death Metal, Christian, um, oh my God. Scour Scourge of the Enthroned. Who did it better? Um, listening to both these, uh, Christian is one of those bands. I've seen them four or five times. I thought they sounded like crap every time. I like them. I don't like their drummer. I think he's fast. 
I think he's really super sloppy and the way he falls in and out of rolls and missing the beat. Oh, it just drives me absolutely insane. The drums on this album are really right on top of things. So I would say this is a little bit darker. The int- the riffs might be a little more interesting. This is a little bit more straightforward, but in the similar, similar vein, I think I prefer the rebellion to be honest, but um, what do you guys think? Christian or rebellion? Who did it better? Depends on the album. Right. I have no horse in this race. Two up on my rebellion, actually. Uh, Crazy, I'm much more familiar with. Uh, I'm like you. I, I think they're more of a studio band for me. But with regarding the drumming, do you think it's more of the uh, the mixing, you know, or, or more the the performance? Yeah, that's a good album. I think I think he, I think he's a good drummer, and I mean they're brothers, so they've grown up playing with each other, so they're used to their idiosyncrasies, and. He just does, he's just got some bad habits that kind of became his style. It's fine. Mm -hmm. The band all adheres to it and it's fine. But when I listen to some of the fills he does and the way he falls in and out of the beat to do these fills, he blasts great. He really good, clean blast, but he shifts around in the tempo to get to certain things. It's, I don't know. It's always bugged me. It, it, It somehow it works. It works for them. Again, they're used to playing with each other for, you know, their whole lives. So I don't hate Christian, but there's just little things that nag me. And it was interesting spinning both of these CDs back to back. And um, I think, like I said, I think I went with the Rebellion first. This has a, it's kind of like an EP. It's got a 2017 recordings and then a 2000 recording of the same songs. No, just different songs. But one song, one, the two, one or the other sounds more like a demo, but I don't know. Good stuff. Good South American death metal. Very cool. Black Force Domain, though, man. That's, I mean, at the time when I first heard that, it was probably one of the most evil things I've heard. <laughs> it was great. All right. <laughs> yep. All right. Who is next? Devin is next. So I think you may maybe know a thing or two about this band. Yep. Oh yeah, it's a good record. So, yep. Are they still signed to Binary? No. Oh, that was just a licensing thing when we were working oh. with Nordvis. Yeah. Okay. They're they're so. more of a Nordvis band. I don't even know if they're with Nordvis anymore. I have no idea. I'll have to check. Yeah. So this is to me like the U.S. version of the U.S. Right. They're Finnish. Shit. Okay. They're from Finland. Finland, U.S. It's in the planet. Close enough. I think Finland. Let me double check that, but I am pretty sure it's Finland. Hold on. Is they have one guy from Finland and one guy from somewhere else? I can't that remember. That could be right also. Uh, one guy from Sweden, one guy from Finland. So they're probably both in the northern part of the countries. Who knows? They're both but, in the northern hemisphere. Yeah. Sons of Krom. Uh, but yeah, it's a cool album. Go ahead, Devin. Yeah, it's kind of like to me, it sounds like mid two thousands enslaved mixed with the Viking era of Bathory, and honestly, both him and Quothon can't really do the clean vocals that well. <laughs> like they they're going a little bit above the like limit, but better than Quothon, but it's not really saying much. But yeah, good epic, kind of some cool like slow acoustic parts too. But yeah, I don't know if they've done any, anything since, have they? I don't believe so. So 2017, so it's been a while, so they're definitely due for a new one, but yeah. 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 They good been good that long, right? When did they form? It was like, not, they haven't been around that long. They formed in, their first release came out in 2014. It was an EP. I hear a little oh. bit of the Enslaved in there too, but without all the proggy elements, you know, that they, that they throw in there. Yeah. It's still epic mm-hmm. in their own way. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And you're right, Devin. They do have that, uh, that kind of Viking era Bathory epic vibe at time on some songs not every song but some that are pretty good at that mainly just because of the vocals that's so like the super like kind of chanty singing mm-hmm. yeah yeah yep. good, yeah good, it's good. a good album i like that one yep there's a whole ton of them left uh, ready to be shipped if anybody wants to buy one go to <laughs> shop.bindrunrecordings.com okay rick all right um, another tie-in. You guys make it too easy for me. So, <laughs> uh, there was all that talk of uh, summoning and Caledon Brood. 
And um, this is one I actually did not have, and um, it's been on my radar for a while. So I finally pulled the trigger on Galibrade, and this was a, uh, you know, one of uh, one of his early uh, projects. This I think this was right before the Calvin Brood stuff. And, I think so. Um, pretty good. Uh, North and Silence put this out, and uh, this is a, uh, well, this is an EP, Ashen I- Idolon Idolon, not quite sure how you say it. But really good. It's it's um doesn't have the um the kind of summoning vibes like Calvin Brood does. Uh, this is a little more stripped down. It's more it's more pagan than than the Calvin Brood stuff. Uh, I like it. Uh, it's got you know uh, quite a different sound. But yeah, I, I love it. This um this reissue. I never actually put the the colors side by side to see if it if it matches. Because we're doing this tonight, right? Yeah, yeah. let's do this. <laughs> it's it's a thing. Yeah, it's good. It matches the logo. Yeah, a little bit. It, it works. We're good. Yeah, I mean, this is kind of a no brainer. If, if if you already have Calvin Brew, this is kind of definitely worth the pickup. I mean, it's definitely uh, it's in that vein. Really good stuff. Um, I mean, it's not all the same. I mean, he does Visigoth too, but that's a completely different project. So mm-hmm. I wonder if he's ever going to return to this uh, this project be very interesting to see or if it's just a, a one and done thing depends yeah. on how busy visigoth keeps him probably yeah visigoth yeah. i think is the one of the three that got actually popular and oh, yeah. live yeah we yeah, might that's... we might see a cow, another cow and brew before this i would i would think too which might seem i don't know just gauging his interest That'd be interesting yeah Cal- the caligon brew you mean has gotten that good underground kind of following to it so if he's got more material in that vein, it would make sense to follow it up. Yeah. All right. Alan. Oh, let's see. Oh, okay. We'll do, we're doing viking stuff. We're doing epic stuff. Uh, so, yeah, that'll lead into... I uh, picked up this. Mythitans Carved in Stone. This is weird. This is actually a three-CD set, but it's all crammed into one normal size jewel case, which... I haven't seen this done before. I was a little surprised. I was expecting to get one of the double uh, CD cases. But yeah, they've got a uh, yeah thing in here that you know swings all the way out with two CDs and then another one laying back here in uh, the back of it. So they, they found a way. They made it work. But uh, bottom line, yeah, this has all three of the Mythitan albums in it, uh, Sign of the Ravens, King of the Distant Forest, and Gathered Around the Oaken Table. Uh, I had a couple of these way back in the day. Well, I had one uh, CD, and I had one on a CDR. I never got the third one, the Oaken Table album. But really good stuff, you know, fast, melodic, plays into, you know, the epic Viking metal themes a lot. But, uh, you know, especially Sign of the Raven, the first one still has, like, you know, a lot of, you know, black metal trappings about it. But it works really well. Um, Always kind of liked it. Don't really know why I got rid of it, to be honest. Sometimes we do things in life that don't always make sense. Uh, King of the Distant Forest never showed up. I never could get a copy of it. The first one was one of those albums... There was a little window of time there in the late 90s, around 97, 98, when some weird stuff was getting licensed in the U.S. So that out of nowhere you could find, like, God Dethroned, uh, Midventer, Hi Ben, uh, Mythitan. There were several of those titles that kind of popped up on U.S. imprints, but none of those bands had their next album, you know, easily... Uh, issued in the u.s so it was kind of annoying because i picked up all of those like yeah a lot of these are pretty good good. and i kept waiting for the second albums to show up and drove me nuts because you couldn't find them anywhere but yeah if anyone's missed mythotin very very good in that you know sort of viking metal style it's a style i like but i get tired of very fast um usually i play an album once or twice in that style it's like okay odin raven Giant boat, lots of dead warriors. Been here, done this. Nice melodies. I don't think I need to play this again. Mythitin's one of the exceptions where uh, play, I didn't think I would uh, be playing it as much as I have, but yeah, these got uh, several spins. I had forgotten just how good these guys were at this style. So cool band, cool to get all the albums in one package for one 
at a relatively low price. It's just a weird package having three CDs crammed in there. Still kind of getting used to that. Thoughts so on Mythitin? Good stuff. Yeah. Well, you, you mentioned God of Throne. Did you see that they have three albums for Cosmic Key Creation? They got a vinyl reissue. I did not. Hmm. Yeah, they're repressing the Grand Grimoire, Bloody Blasphemy, and Ravenous. Okay, I knew they were doing uh, Grand. Gr I knew they were doing Bloody Blasphemy because I saw that one somewhere. But yeah, I didn't know about the others. That's cool. Uh, Ben's asking if you've heard Falconer. He says, "I bet you'd love them." It's got some guitar player from Mythitin. I have same guitar player heard, as Mythitin. I have. It's been a long time since I checked them out, Ben. But yeah, I did check out because you're right. One of the guys ended up in Falconer after Mythitin uh, split. I think. I remember them being decent. I just never followed up on them. It was something I got in like a CDR trade 20 years ago, and uh, those are long gone. So might have to check that out since I've enjoyed the method. And thanks for jogging my memory. All right, All right. Marty, you, you going to follow the uh, Viking train here? Uh, no, it's not really. It's Sweden, that's not, I guess, uh, heritage wise, it could be. <laughs> but, um, this is Mephisto, the Megalomania Puzzle. This is a Swedish... At this point, this is... Uh, oh, well, I guess I should say what this is. Vic Records reissued this. This is the band's first two demos. They both came out in 1986, entitled Megalomania and The Puzzle. I put them on one CD. Kind of seen as a classic band in Swedish circles, Swedish musician circles. It's... The musical style on here is kind of proto-death. There's some thrash leanings a little bit. Kind of proto-death. The The real standout to both of these is some very good guitar work, good solos. Um, they're okay. I mean, is it an amazing... Is it amazing band? I don't think they're amazing, but I have enjoyed you know checking this stuff out. Um, yeah, cool first wave black metal, kind of. There's a little bit of that vibe in here, too. But, yeah, this is a cool collection of the first two demos. I remember reading or seeing an interview with Michael Eckerfeldt when he was super young. He apparently had these demos and would listen to them incessantly, and they were a big influence on him. I don't know. But, yeah, one of those bands that I never heard of back in the day, and uh, people are coming out of the woodwork saying they were an influence. So, yep. Devin. Did somebody say German pilot metal? <laughs> I hope so. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. So to me, the first two albums are definitely, I call like the Judas Priest era because they definitely sound a lot like that. And later on, I think they would develop their own sound. They would get more like speed metal influence. The first two were almost more like traditional metal with a little bit of rock, but they would definitely get a lot faster. But not one of the not one of my favorites by them. The first two are good, but they were good great later on. But the last song, Chains and Leather. No bueno. Chains <laughs> and Leather. We will be together. Isn't that a sa that's a Saxon song, isn't it? Oh, it's denim and leather. Never mind. It's denim and leather, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm having I'm already having PTSD from the Saxon, <laughs> the Saxon thing. I'm I'm blinking in and out of consciousness right now. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, good, yeah good, that good, song, Devin. I mean, it's it's very much you know kind of their take on like a priest's take on all the world. Or, that song uh, sucks too. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, it's it's very much what they were going for. They they wanted their big, you know, stompy, anthemic crowd pleaser, uh, just like Priest. Because you're absolutely right that you know those first two have a huge Judas Priest. I mean, when and wild, they stole the name from a Priest song, so they very much sense. did. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I really like that album. A lot of people overlook it. It's got that weird kind of dark, dungeony vibe in the production, but it actually works nicely with the material. Um, it, it sounds muffled or something, but somehow it actually works. Yeah. Okay, Rick. What am I doing? Here we go. You're muted. This is a new pickup for me. Uh, this is band Slog and uh, Divination. So I picked up their um, Graves album um, the year before, and it, it's kind of um, it's a two-man thing. Jar Jared Mor Moran, uh, one of the members here, it's like 
he's got like a million bands. Got I got a few of his stuff. Uh, Sitting Hoops. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Mouth of Graves. There's a few. There's a few of these projects out there. Guy doesn't sleep. But I really like this one. And um, so the, the the first one here was more like um, it was more of Doom with Death. A lot of atmosphere. Uh, very 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 cemetery fog. In a lot of ways, it's it's um, but really really enjoyed what I heard here. I wanted to hear uh, what 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 the follow up would have been like. So I was very curious. Uh, so I picked this up, and I was kind of surprised at the change of direction uh, they took with this. So this this has more um, death metal elements. It's a little faster, uh, but still really cool. Um, definitely uh, recommend checking this out. But this this one has been spinning in my rotation quite a lot lately. Um, Slog Divination. Hmm. Um, yeah. Again, they're out of LA, and um, yeah. yeah, more more bit of miserable. This is a, a a label I've been keeping an eye on one more often. They've been putting out some good stuff. So morbid and miserable. Never morbid heard of miserable. I, yeah. I gotta say, Rick. Yeah, I I picked that up and tried to listen to it. It was hard to get through for me. You might say it was a real slog. I, I would I would say <laughs> they definitely do fit the name. Um, I would, I would no, say, and to be say, and to be clear, no, I, I am making a joke. I'm not familiar with the band. <laughs> if, if if you don't like the slower stuff, uh, this is definitely the uh, the one to check out. It's, it's, it's again, it's faster, has more more of the death metal elements in there. Um, but I mean, I like them both. Oh, Wade says uh, they're playing in his area soon. Oh, hollowed Isle, hollowed Isles. I've I've done some shirts for them. They're good. They were a good band. All right, uh, Alan. Ah, uh, okay. I um, I'll see uh, Devin's uh, traditional German metal and uh, call with more traditional German metal, but a band that you don't hear mentioned much, Gravestone. This was another band that was very active, you know, at the exact same time period as all the classics. The difference is this band it was on scratch records for at least some of their albums. And, you know, th there's a very clear hierarchy when it comes to 80s German metal. You know, you've got, you know, steam hammer and noise, you know, we're up here at the top. Then you go down, you know, a little bit. Then you maybe go down another level or so, and uh, you scratch is somewhere maybe around the third or fourth step. Um, they had some good bands on the label, don't get me wrong. They just seemed to have very little distribution, and it's something I've heard other people comment on over the years, that, yeah, the scratch records just didn't circulate very well. I, I don't know what the details were, but it seems like they didn't have a lot of promotion going on, and they didn't have a lot of distribution, so some of those artists kind of languished a bit, but anyway, this is, I think it's their third or fourth album might be the fourth called back to attack, not winning any prizes for cover art or the title, but it is a very solid, you know, just slab of eighties German metal. If you, um, you like you know, early running wild, if you like, um, try to think the best comparison It's a bit like, except, if you took, you know, Udo's, you know, very unique, we'll go with unique, unique vocals out of the equation. You know, it, it doesn't have the speed of, say, early rage. You know, it's definitely not, uh, you know, in the Halloween camp or anything like that. It's not quite as commercial as Sinner was. Uh, so, yeah, you're getting maybe a little bit more in the uh, Storm Witch, who were also on Scratch for at least one album, I think. Uh, you're getting you know, in that kind of you know, vein where it's just, you know, very good, solid 4 4 Judas Priest inspired heavy metal. Their first couple albums I've never heard, they were much earlier in the 80s, so I have a strong suspicion they're probably a little bit more on the hard rock side. But by the time they got to 84 85, they're decent enough metal albums, just uh, one of those bands that very much got swept under the rug because there were so many of them. Uh, you can't have every one of them become a household name, and Gravestone certainly didn't. But it's not a bad album. Uh, Marty, it's one that you might dig. I wouldn't say run out and buy it, but you know, dial it up on Spotify or something if you're not familiar with them. It, it, it's a solid listen. Right yeah, it, looks like, it looks like a Stone Witch album. I was going to say maybe like that. 
it, it does. You're uh, right, Devin. It does look a bit like a Stormwitch album. They're not. They don't have Stormwitch's really strong sense of melody, uh, but they're they're in the, that same zip code as say so, yeah. So on Metal Archives, it says early they used to be a progressive rock band. Okay, yeah, they're, they're, those really? first two albums have always been. There, there's something about them that, yeah, has always made me not want to check those two out. Progressive rock, that you know, that would make sense. There's some demo tracks at the end of this that are very odd sounding, and they do have that maybe that little more proggy '70s vibe. I bet the bonus tracks are from that earlier era. I hadn't looked them up to see where they came from. It's got a, uh, it's it's got a gloomy from. look to it too. If I saw that, not knowing what it is, I would think there's some there's something doom going on with that. Yeah, I can see that. It, it, the the name, yeah, could certainly go. We must get that one best old claret album. A little doomy, but uh, yeah, doesn't really have that vibe to it. Just a solid a solid German metal outing for folks that are tired of listening to the you know 36 other bands <laughs> that were populating that scene. 136 in other bands. 1984, 1985. Oh, it couldn't have been more than fifty-three. <laughs> so, so Jürgen probably saw the wife at some point. Probably I, he. They probably live like three houses down, and he used to like you know buy milk from their grandma and uh, stuff. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, did um somebody say traditional German speed metal? <laughs> ah, yeah. uh, this one technically Celtic Frosty beat you to it in the chat. Yeah, he did. He did. <laughs> this, this one entered. I haven't spun this in a while. It re-entered the CD player here earlier in the week. Can never not hear Walls of Jericho. What what a perfect what a perfect song. So good. Never gets tired. Never get tired of it. Um, record produced by Harris Johns. This is OG Press. Very much. I like. I love these original pressings and original masterings. If you want it louder, you turn it up. <laughs> and instead of turning it on and being like, what the hell is happening? But um, Eternal Classic, Kai Hansen's last uh, bout of singing solo with the band. Wait a minute. No. Did Judas come out after this? Maybe Judas. Came, no, wait. Yeah, I, I can't. At the same time. It all, it's all fuzzy. They, they did the self-titled EP, Judas, and this all a very short period of time. Very... Very productive, uh, youthful German musicians at this point. Classic Halloween. I haven't talked about them they're, in a while. I feel better now. Quickly change after that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah, that's that's just a classic album. I, it may it may be a flawless album. I'm not sure. If not, it's darn close. Uh, Is it flawless, Marty? Let's put you on the spot. Yeah, it really is. I don't dislike any song on here. Um, yeah, I mean, start to finish, it, they're they're great songs. Metal Invaders, what a great song! Mm -hmm. That's a great, great deep track. Yep they they better play "Ride the Sky" in this U.S. tour. They're putting it in a, a a medley of songs. Kai comes out and does a medley of like four songs. I think it starts with "Ride the Sky," ends with "Ride the Sky." You know, they kind of like. Pull a Dio, <laughs> mm. and uh, that's annoying. But uh, they're trying to get everybody represented, all the eras represented, and obviously the the Kiska and the Darius eras produced the biggest hits. So mm -hmm. that's what they're going to roll with the most. And I'm fine with that. I think Kai's vocals are strained a little bit these days due to cigarettes, extended period of smoking cigarettes, not good for the voice, but. Anyway, of course, it sounded like you'd already had problems with that in 1985. Yeah. <laughs> right on. Devin. Did someone say German thrash? <laughs> That's a great record, too. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. How were the comeback records? Have you heard them? I have I have brain damage, but I don't think that's a comeback. That's came this, out that, before that, that, that one or no, that one after. This, this is the debut. This is yeah. 88, I think. I haven't heard any of the comeback albums that I can think yeah, of. Yeah, it was 19 years later, so it's probably not very good. Probably not good. Probably yeah. not good. No, but definitely, they were one of the thrash bands from Germany that didn't have any extreme metal influences like early Sodom or Destruction or Creator. They were definitely more towards like the Death Row era, but less technical than Death Row. But their debut from, I think, 88, 88 or 89, but yeah. 
Good record. They Definitely. put out three albums since they reformed in 2000. And they put out a 2003 demo, then 2007 a, an EP, and then three full lengths. 2007, 2011, 2017. They don't have very good reviews. They're not good reviews. Like the Feed the Extermination only has two reviews and only 30%, 36% rating. <laughs> Yikes. So the long. Hate full length return is 52%. So I mean, yeah, I'm I'm gathering that they're probably not very good. Though the comeback protector records are pretty good, though. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So definitely listen to the first song, "Suicidal Lunacy." It's probably the best song on this record. It's a whole... good album, though. The whole yeah. thing is good. If you've watched me for more than ten seconds, you know I am a self-admitted whore for German thrash. I will definitely admit that. Well, it's good stuff. Classic. Or exactly laps. Don't trust anyone who doesn't love German thrash. <laughs> exactly. I need a bubble sticker that says that. <laughs> All right, Rick. I'm going to pull something a little interesting. Uh, I, I found out the record store, and not a band I've been acquainted with, uh, but the cover looked very interesting. And um, there was a name in the back that kind of caught, caught my eye. Uh, you guys familiar with House of Lords? I'm oh, familiar yes, with definitely. the name. I love that band. This is uh, their second album, Sahara. Yep, James Christian. Yep. It, 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 well, the cover implies it's more heavy metal than it really is. It, yeah, it, it's, it's a hard rock band. <laughs> hard rock AOR. Started by yep. the guy who um, uh, was the keyboardist for Angel. Uh, yeah, Jeffra. I Greg, never know how to pronounce his name. Jeffria? Or Jeffria, yeah. Jeffra Greg, yeah, something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, he was only on the first album, I, I think. I think he was on a... I think he wasn't the first two. Um, he might have. He might have been. He, might have been. Check he the, wasn't uh, in the band long. He's he's uh this guy and then uh, the bassist for Quiet Riot. Uh, oh, he's on this one. Okay, my mistake. I think I think the reason for that is because uh, this was the, and I didn't I didn't know Gene Simmons had his own record label. Uh, at some point, it might have been an imprint from another label. Uh, on top of that, right there. So uh, and I think that was that's probably why. So after this album, I think they moved on to. Um, what, what, what was it? It was, it was another major label. Uh, it's good. It's uh, but again, it's got it's got classic heavy classic uh, heavy rock with uh, some AOR elements. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, if this is your thing. Uh, I think we'll check it out. It's pretty good. I haven't checked out their their newer stuff, so I wonder if it holds up the same. It's very uh, consistent. Yes. Is it? Yeah. It's um, the lineup is a little back and forth. They they have like about eight guys who kind of rotate through the band so you know you'll have a guitarist on was... for, yeah you'll have a guitarist on for two albums and then he'll you know bow out and somebody else will play on the next album and so yeah the lineup was always a little it looks unstable but when you check it's the same guys but no the music has always been stable they're one of the better comeback bands uh in terms of having disappeared for a while and then coming back and done really good stuff. The, the albums can be pretty samey. You know, you're you know what you're going to get when you pick up a House of Lords album. But yeah, I've, I really like that band. I've got a lot of their albums, not all of them, but a bunch. There's actually a my, uh, the uh, fun trivia from Alan's life. One of the tracks on that trick uh, was uh, my wife and I had it played at our wedding because it's pretty and we liked it. Awesome. Really? It was supposed to be um, Greg's solo album, but then. Uh, to sign on to Gene's label, uh, he decided that they should just form this band, and, and it became this project. This, this wasn't the original idea, mm-hmm. um, from what I read. Very interesting how this came about. Yeah, still yeah, this, the, yeah. The first album got some hype when it came out with uh, with the keyboardist in it. The first album is a bit keyboard heavy, and um, it's never been my personal favorite. It, it's okay, but I much prefer the stuff starting with that one with Sahara and moving on to demons down and most of the, most of the albums they did when they came back together, their, their first one on the reunion kick was a little iffy, but after that they really found their niche and uh, they stuck to it. I think they've been on frontiers records for a long time. And if people are familiar with that label, that tells you pretty much everything you need to know. They've got that classic, 80s hard rock sound that Frontiers loves to churn out on lots of uh, releases. 
I think it definitely fall under that heavy metal thing. If they were a little faster, just a little heavier, I think they, they tread that line. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're right there, right there at the edge of it. They a lot of times unfairly get lumped in, you know, with glam bands because you know, yeah. just from that era, they've got the hair. Everybody had that hair back then. The thrash bands had the same hair back then. You, you, don't don't judge an '80s kid by their hair because they all had the same hair. <laughs> Uh, and don't the same thing can be said about 70s kids don't judge them by their back hair <laughs> <laughs> or their or their pants because there was no you could not buy non bell bottoms for like eight years in a row yeah. <laughs> there, there were no pants that fit correctly yep. you bought the bell bottoms small animals made a home underneath them and you just had to deal with it that's right but yeah that's a cool album rick glad you showed that one all right alan Okay. Uh, did someone say 80s hard rock? I'm going to talk about Behemoth. <laughs> uh, yeah, Behemoth. We've got uh, the Return of the Northern Moon, one of their technically demos from huh. the very early days. I've never seen that. Days. Is that a demo? Or a, it, it, yes. A bootleg? Um, almost certainly, yeah. yeah. But it's a fairly nice one. The booklet is glossy, and uh, there's art on the disc. Right on. And, uh, stuff. So, yeah, this one is their We Want to Be Hellhammer Today demo. Uh, very, very Hellhammer influenced in the sound and style. It's even got a cover of Aggressor from Hellhammer on it. Yeah, they're, they're wearing it on their sleeve. Absolutely. They do it pretty well. Um, when you consider the conditions this is recorded under, you know, sort of early 90s Poland, you know, very little access to you know good recording equipment or facilities of any type. They you know they do a reasonably good Hellhammer tribute kind of thing here. Plus, I they're can... kids at this point, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, they're they're teenagers when yeah. this comes out. At this point, I think it's th I think there were three of them. I think Frost was still in the band, if I'm remembering the names right. I think it was still Nurgle, Ball, and Frost at this stage. Yeah, you know, after this, they. The next demo sounded completely different. You know, the next one they was uh, from the pagan vastlands, and they had went into you know pure Norwegian second wave black metal, you know early mayhem and Burzum kind of worship. So they didn't stick with this style very long. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's a cool listen. Behemoth's just one of these odd bands. They've covered a pretty wide range of styles over time, and it, they've never been my favorite band, but. When I find their stuff cheap, I'll pick it up, and I'm usually pretty happy with it. And lately, I've been making a little more of an effort to dig around and find copies of the earlier stuff, because most of that I had not heard. And yeah, as you know, early examples of '90s black metal, I get it. They're not the you know they're not on that same you know tier of you know early Dark Throne or Immortal for a reason. But they're really not that far behind either. Again, I still, I still for, prefer their '90s stuff. They're, they don't do anything different or, or unique from like what everybody else was doing. But you know, mm -hmm. still enjoy for what it is. That's a very good way to put it, Rick. Yeah, yeah. This album, they're trying to sound like Hellhammer. The next demo, they're just trying to sound like a Norwegian band. So it's not original, but it's pretty well done, and I find them enjoyable. So I'm having fun very slowly picking my way through the old uh, Behemoth releases and. Uh, Checking them out, seeing how they line up. So is that before or after after uh, after Force Dreams Eternally? Is that after that one? This one is uh, a little bit before that one. Forest okay. Dreams Eternally was late ninety three, early ninety four, and I think this one's late ninety two or early ninety three. Hmm. So yeah, that one. Yeah, the EP is just a little bit later, not by much though. But it had already yes shifted you know styles by the time that came out all right what you got next to marty not something i not a style i listen to often but um i was checking out this first internal rot full length australian grindcore pretty interesting well done stuff they're, crushing they're cover, their covers are usually interesting <laughs> there's a drummer a guitar player and a singer so there's no bassist on this and it's just really savage the script the singer you could tell he kind of sounds like he's puking when he's screaming he's just really going yep. just going for it balls out their their follow-up full length is really good too i have that one on tape um but yeah I, this isn't something i listen to often but i uh 
I really enjoy it. Good stuff. Well done. Well recorded. Organic and noisy. It just sounds very live, which is cool. Yeah. Eternal Rot. Mental Hygiene. Their debut. There's a whole bunch of splits and stuff they've done as well, but uh, they have two full lengths. Not to be confused with Eternal Rot. (laughs) What's that, Rick? Not to be confused with Eternal Rot. Right. It's an internal rot. Eternal rot. Very different bands. (laughs) Or cerebral rot. Anyway, yeah. Devin. So before I show the next one, Ben was asking if I know these. So if you're still watching, Ben, yes, I do. Oh, those are so good. Did someone say disgusting Danish death metal? You did. Ah, uh, oh, yeah. Undergang. What the fuck? Aninet Ad Dalton. Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> are you are you Danish? Yeah. I mean, look at the song titles. You can't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. This should be a stream. We just try to pronounce the stuff, these Polish names and Finnish names. And yep. Just so these people could just laugh at us. <laughs> Maybe. So if you guys know the old school band Rock Revoid, to me, these guys are like the modern version of that band. Mm, okay. Especially vocal wise. Like it, if you, it has a kind of like <clears throat> sound to it. Yeah, I know it's so original, but nailed it. Though kind of hard to understand what they're saying because they speak in Danish and it's super guttural. So good luck. But the OG yeah. one didn't have the blue in the back, right? I think it was just all black and white. Put yeah, I think so. I think this is Masako on Ujo. Again, nailed that perfectly. But mm-hmm. but unlike Rakovo, they weren't lazy. They actually did more than one album over thirty years. But I think they formed like the mid two thousands. So yeah. Good oh. stuff. I, they don't come in the state. I don't think they ever have. But it would be cool to see them live. So, yeah. I gotta say, the um, I have a couple of the earlier ones too, and I really like them. You're right, really dirty, awesome, heavy death metal. And then their most recent one, where the, the it's like the mirror and the guy's cutting his face in the mirror. That the, the latest album. Yeah, I thought that was boring. I was like, what happened? There just doesn't have the intensity or the urgency to it. They tried to be more catchy, but. It just was the riffs were super boring. I'm like, wow, I, I like the sound, I like the vocals, I just don't like the songs. Really lost some of their edge, but I couldn't be, you know, what do I know? I could have been a time too I wasn't in the mood to listen to that stuff, which Maybe. which happens. Rick. Did someone say disgusting death metal? Uh, Me. this is the uh, latest church of disgust. Uh, mm, oh yeah. Much. Great band. I've been seeing, cool I've been seeing that Texas. around in the shops. Yeah. Uh, the orange is a little a little bright for my taste. I don't know if it shows well in the camera. But kind of matches at least the logo. I'm still fine with it, though. Um, yeah, I mean, these guys these guys kind of, uh, they tried all these different styles. Like, you know, at times they sound like autopsy. At, at times they have like these pole throw ridge kind of riffs. At times they sound like cyanide. Uh, but they... They never really disappoint. You know, what I mean, I like everything they have that they that they put out. So, this is one of those bands like I think I'm pretty much gonna pick up everything they <laughs> they put out. So it's just like this is one of those. This is some of that death metal that you know I know I know it's gonna be pretty good. Now uh, they're really all about that Lovecraftian theme mm. with their stuff. Uh, but uh, yeah, glad to glad to finally get a copy of this. Yeah, even the back artwork is cool too. It's yeah. just cool, cool design. Yeah, you know, people tend to underestimate, you know, the, the the value of a good band photo. You know, like this is yeah, this is an example of it done right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, where, where are they from again? Uh, Texas. I don't know what town. Yeah, I think Liam mentioned them on his last update. Oh, did he? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've previewed that one on Bandcamp. I haven't pulled the trigger on it yet, but it's uh, yeah, it's not bad. Cool stuff. Cool. We'll see if I circle back around to it. Another good poll. Both of you guys. Okay, Alan, what do you got? I'll stick to uh, black metal for at least one more round here. With uh, Let's do some Portuguese. Very raw, lo-fi black metal. Uh, black Silas. And Esoteric Activism. This is, I think, their sixth album uh, that came out last year. It's... Uh, I know a few of their albums. I don't know their entire catalog, but it, they tend to go for you know the very low end production, you know, 
uh, the, the, the stereotypical you know, Nordic black metal kind of production where it's very hard to hear a lot of stuff. Uh, if you can cut through the production, you know, they do have some you know, really good melody lines and stuff you know, included in the music. It's not just you know, random thrashing around, can't play anything. You know, there's some cool music, but you do have to cut through the production. This one strikes me as being a bit more aggressive overall than maybe the last one or two albums have been, but uh, still like it quite a bit. I haven't spent a ton of time with this one yet. I've been, you know, as you can tell from this playlist, I've been all over the place musically for the past month or so, listening to a little bit of everything. So I need to circle back to this and give it some additional spins. But yeah, uh, you know, there's a lot of little scenes in Europe that have been getting attention lately. With, uh, uh, it's all right. Melanie says Black Salise is so raw. I got salmonella. <laughs> they should put that on the hype sticker for their next album. <laughs> Absolutely. Melanie loves death metal, sis. <laughs> that would be the way to go. But have yeah, you ever, you know, have you ever bought anything because of a hype sticker? Like just in general? <laughs> probably. Is that ever worse Maybe. Mine, but I probably have. Depeche uh, Commode had a fun video on his channel uh, not too long he ago did. about hype stickers and uh, just some of the cool stuff you see. But yeah, this is just another one of those, you know, scenes that's popped up in Europe. You know, you've got, you know, the, you know, Black Plague Circle scene in, uh, you know, Bosnia, Herzegovina. You've got the Portuguese uh, scene. Uh there's at least you know one or two cool bands from Belarus uh, that are doing some stuff. So yeah, there, there's a lot of good black metal that's you know, meant to be you know the sort of you know raw lo-fi stuff, but it, it's well written. A lot of these bands are doing good songs, not just trying to make tormented noise for the sake of it. So uh, it's, I've enjoyed it's hard checking to do that right. Out. You know, uh, again, you mentioned Black Solis, like kind of Lambrum. We're not one of those bands. Uh, when I see that cover, it kind of already gives me that vibe. Like, okay, it's mm -hmm. going to be that kind of band. <laughs> Yep, yep, yeah. So, yeah, I've checked out. It's, I'm still, you know, I'm, it's been whatever has turned up. But uh, I, one of the one of the guys that works at one of the local record stores is obviously into this stuff because there's been a little trickle of it coming in lately. So he's had this. He's had uh, Sulfuric Night um, is really good. Uh, Paveshen, a couple of them here and there. <coughs> Well, uh, you're you're no longer Professor Steel. All the cult shit you've been showing tonight, you're now uh, Professor Cross Perverter in my eyes. <laughs> Just so you know. Oh, cool! I get my own uh, black metal nickname now. <laughs> or, or Professor Goat Void. We need to we need to maybe put it up to the the chat. Who would it should be? Professor like Goat, Goat Void. Void. Been, Goat Void's probably been taken. Let's face it. We have used pretty, pretty much sure every single part of that goat slash buffalo by now. <laughs> we um, have, yes. Yep. Goat All goat right. pancreas. I'm holding out that goat pancreas isn't spoken for. That right. shall be my black metal project when the time comes. Okay. I am up next. What have I got here? Oh, okay. Well, from the album club, I was spinning these quite a bit for a bit. The uh, Beket... Hmm. I can't say it. Beket Kekkarak. Kekkarak, yeah. Whatever. Uh, Night That's and another Love. good one, yeah. Yeah, Night and Love and Pale Swordsman. Both of these records are very similar. There, there really isn't much differentiation between the two of them. I think Pale Swordsman is maybe a little more stripped down, uh, a little catchier. But, I mean, this stuff is still built very firmly upon a foundation of Burzum riffs and overall, you know, raw black metal aesthetic with some piano and you know childish spoken word garbage here and there but i don't know i like it i know melanie did a video where she was uh chastising herself for buying them because of the hype but i i like raw black metal i do i like it a lot and this stuff is not that offensive to me although the i mean the sitting there holding the, the rose the black metal bachelor i just i uh <laughs> Sad boy Bozum. Yeah, sad boy Bachelor Bozum. He wants Pretty to much. give his rose to you. <laughs> I I don't know. It's cool. I'm glad I have him. I'll listen to him on if, occasion. If Hot Topic ever decides to go to the raw black metal like thing, like that, probably be the the band that be on the. It would be the, the first thing they stock. <laughs> it probably yeah. would. Yeah, <laughs> they they are good albums though. They are. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Y'all did a good conversation on that because it, it is a weird vibe, you know, for raw black metal to go in that. 
direction with you know some of the other like the harp in the background and the lyrics that are a little bit more you know poetic and going in almost the you know, pseudo romantic kind of vibe so it's a it's it's a it's it's a I, if you want to call it a gimmick or whatever but it at least does make him stand out in the crowd yep it'll be interesting to see where it goes from here if he stays in that realm or if he goes mm-hmm. the path of Alcest and gets post metal post rock you know we'll see yep yep goes in some kind of goth direction or something don't know yep all right devin so staying with some black metal but less grim i guess but kind of marduk opus nocturne so usually when i'm in the mood for the honestly my favorites the debut or the demo but i'm in the mood for the stuff after that i usually pull heaven shall burn but I haven't spun this one in a while, so yeah, I think this is the third from 95, I want to say. Good record. I think you're right. If Super not, you're really close. Yeah. Wasn't yeah I, this... I always liked that one. Yeah, I heard your story about when you got trying to start a mosh pit at the show. I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> Play wolves, motherfuckers. Yep. <laughs> this and and they look, did. And they I love very it. I got sad. a black eye for my troubles. <laughs> they need a hug and a sandwich. They look very sad. <laughs> they, they probably it, didn't get a lot of uh, food uh, per diem on the uh, touring through, you know, barns in North Carolina. <laughs> so maybe they did need a sandwich. Maybe isn't one of this guy one of the guys in like a D beat side project? I do not know because I think on Nightwing the guitarist has a Wolfpack T shirt on, so that would make sense. An NWO Wolfpack? No, like the. I know where is it. So no, I didn't think that's the wolf pack you meant, but uh no, I mean like the oh, I think it's this one. Yep, there he is. See so, yeah. has on the wolf pack t shirt. Yeah. Huh. No, yeah. So it would make sense, but yeah. All right. Rick. Unless well, everybody wants to watch uh, Devin resleeve that. <laughs> no, let me, let's... no, he Fuck couldn't off. get it. He couldn't figure it out. Okay. <laughs> what is what is that? What is that thing with the what's it? Uh, M- MSR, whatever the um, ASMR videos. Oh yeah. Just <laughs> probably a version of that, right? For just yeah. leaving or resleeving. Oh, there's nothing. I've wasted so many years of my life watching people try to resleeve stuff on YouTube videos. <laughs> And they don't give up. They, they can't get it. And they just keep doing it and doing it. And you're like, you can do it. You can when, do it. When I do it, at least I'll, I'll talk while I'm doing it. So at least there's right. some reason. Some people don't. They stop and they're like, oh, I can't get it. Yeah. And they finally do. And you're like, yay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My double uh, LP sets are just too hard to get well, properly wrapped. So, yeah. You know. All right. So if we're, if we're doing the raw black metal thing, I, I got a pull. So this is one that came out in November. Uh, I actually got a. Wind of this band back in 2020 with uh, Alchemy and War. Really good album. So th- this is quickly becoming one of my favorite, I guess, what you call raw black metal acts. So this is from Portland. I'll press up Descent. Don't know if you're familiar mm. with them. Oh, that looks no? cool. That looks really uh, cool. Spite is, spite is my, it's my scepter. Uh, Blood is my crown. So this awesome. is their fourth full length. Uh, what, what is this title? It looks like a crust record. It looks like a Hell Shock album. Yeah. It does have that look, right? Uh, it's it's very much raw black metal. Oh, it's black. Oh, it looks uh, awesome. It's uh, in in Inferno Profundus put this out. Um, that, actually, very very good quality packaging. Um, nice nice thick stock. They went ahead. You you know it's good when they color the inside. <laughs> uh, it's got some other st- stuff in here, but um, yeah, this 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 is. This is my favorite one uh, so far. This is this is this is really good. It's got a very cold sound. It's got a lot of like what you call very um very rolling momentum, uh, but it's not so raw that it, you know where it's 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 got a really good production. It's got a lot of it's got some punch to it, you know, despite it being raw. Mm-hmm. Uh, but again, it has a very it does it's have that very Pacific Northwest sound. You know, it, it, I mean, if you like Lamp and Murmur and that kind of thing, this would appeal to you. I, I don't think this sounds exactly like like uh, you know it's a one guy thing, um, but I don't think uh, it sounds like Lamp or Murmur exactly, but it has that feel from that region. Uh, but I, I would say it, again th- that that cold sound. If 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 you took Immortal, you know kept the kept the coldness of the riffs, but just made them a little more faster and more raw, uh, you would get something a little more like this with with the USBM kind of feel. 
Hmm. But um, definitely, I would say if you if you're gonna check them out, this would be a good one to start. They got a bunch of splits uh, and a bunch of EPs and things. That looks really cool. Yeah. But um, yeah. But yeah, this is um really 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 good. Cool. Rick, can you type that one in the chat? So... Yeah. Alan. Let's see. All right. Well, Rick is typing. <clears throat> ah, here's one I've been meaning to get back around to for a very long time and finally have. And uh, Marty, you might have a thing or two to say about this. I have finally sat down and spent a lot of time with that the rules. first uh, Arch Matthäus album. So, yep, obviously, John Arch and Jim Matheos getting back together you know, long, long after Fate's Warning. Uh, they had parted ways with that. But um, when this first came out, I just wasn't in the mood for this kind of stuff at all. So didn't pay it much attention. When I finally did check it out, I found it really hard to get into. Just, you know, obviously, you're expecting it to be kind of dense and complicated. I found it to be really dense and a bit off-putting so kind of just quickly is like okay i've heard it uh, i don't want to listen to it anymore right now and uh never had really circled back around to it so hey it only took what a decade 15 years i don't know how old <laughs> it's been out for a long time uh i have finally figured out how this album works this album has a very long track number one uh neurotic something Neurotically Wired, the first yep. track is 11 minutes and 12 seconds long. Now, Rick, this is a slog. Th this first track is <laughs> hard for me to get through personally. Um, it's not that it's written badly or anything. It's just very complicated, and it's 12 minutes. You know, it's pushing 12 minutes long. It's very modern and very heavy, too. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's heavy, it's modern, but it just, yeah, it's a tough way to open an album. For me, it, that that was the wall that I was not getting through, because what I figured out was if I skip that track and I just listen to the rest of the album, I really like it. And the songs are accessible. You can get into them easier. They're still you know, going to be you know, the proggy kind of high minded stuff you'd expect from this pair of guys. But you can pick those songs apart, put them back together. You can remember them, understand what they're doing with them. So yeah, it, this was a case where just that first song, you know, it's like when you play one of those video games and you can't figure out how to jump over the giant hole and so you jump into it like 13 times in a row before you finally realize the secret little move. I you, just you, had to figure out the secret about that little game move. Pitfall, right? Yeah. I, <laughs> yes, I remember that game. I hated that game. Yeah. Stupid crocodiles. Those gators, yep. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, for me, I just have to skip that first track. That first song is not for me. The rest of the album is absolutely fine, and it's exactly what I would expect and enjoy from uh, two very, very creative and talented forces in heavy metal. So yeah, I, I got there. I just have to skip one track. I heard that album for the first time, and I cried. <laughs> as cheesy as that sounds, hearing I... John sound so pure and amazing, I mean... He sounds great. Absolutely great on that record. He really does. I think I do still prefer the second one, Winter Ethereal. Over See, this one. I'm I'm with what you felt about Neurotically Wired. I feel about Winter Ethereal. I like and it. And other folks say that. It's yep. super dense. It, the, on that one that you showed, I think they actually left room. John left room for the music to breathe at times, which mm -hmm. he's not real keen on doing that very often he usually plasters everything he fills but the space he fills the space but on that album he really he stretched out his vocals and let them shine and even mm -hmm. the uh the two songs on the john archie p i don't know if you've heard that that's yeah. really really good i really mm -hmm. love that yeah two those amazing songs good. but yep. anyway we could talk about that record forever but i was gonna say you guys gonna do a fate one in deep dive sometime we already did with jeff wagner Oh yeah, yeah. We've been there, and uh, but we might do another one. Yeah, I wouldn't put it past us. That one hurt as well. <laughs> that was a tough one to get through. Anyway, um, next up for me, as far as I know, this is a non-sketch band. Uh, it's a Russian band, Sivage Yar. This is the uh, 2020 full length. Uh, the translation is grief. It's I've got. 
I think most of his records, except for the newest ones, came out on Avant Garde. Very, it sounds in a lot of ways like a Russian Panopticon. And I know the guy that that is the soul. There's one guy in this band. Yeah, he's the a, one guy thing. Yeah, I he's want, a, he's a very big you, Panopticon pan, uh, fan. What's that? I wasn't the same thing with you. I, I didn't show it on my channel because I was 100% if it wasn't a sketch thing. No. So I was like, I, did, I looked all over. I didn't find anything that, that could imply that, but I wanted to be sure. This, but... Yeah, there's... Um, I've got like four or five tapes of his, and now I've uh, recently picked this up, and it's it's good, enjoyable. It sounds like that type of uh, woodsy, atmospheric black metal from that part of the world. Again, there's a lot of Panopticon on this. I think uh, minus the you know the fiddles and all that stuff, but hmm. really good CGR. Don't ask me how to spell it. I had to look up the English translation of one of the song titles on Metal Archives to get it to pull up. It's all in Russian. So good luck, good luck, Godspeed. But uh, awesome, yep. absolutely great. Uh, very atmospheric black metal. Cool, Devin. Let's go in the complete opposite direction. Oh, nice. Classic. So Misfits Collection 1, so I don't know which... I don't know where these songs are from. This is a compilation of, I think, the early stuff, but I usually don't like greatest hits records, but this is a good compilation when I'm in the mood for the Misfits, but I can't decide what album to listen to, so I just throw the song, mm-hmm. so... It has, like, She, Hollywood, Babylon, Bullet, Horror Business, Teenagers from Mars... Skulls, I turn into emotion. Die, die, my darling. Earth AD, Devil Walk. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's a, it's a really good collection. When it comes when to Misfits, Misfits, especially their early stuff, it's like the compilation thing kind of makes more sense because their stuff was all over the place. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like yep. stuff that was recorded earlier will come out later. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I wish it had Halloween, but I have Legacy of Brutality, so it's on that. So I'm good for that. Mm-hmm. One. Yeah, it's also on uh, Collection Two, the one with the brown cover. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's yeah, and those tracks are from throughout their catalog. There's a lot of early ones, but then there's some later ones on there too. But yeah, uh, it's a, it's a really nice collection. I was thinking about going to one of the reunion shows, and I saw the ticket prices. No, I'm not paying three hundred dollars for nosebleeds. No, thank you. That ain't happening. Mm, yeah, yeah. I, I saw them several times uh, during the Graves era. They were always fun. Uh, I've seen them play with Jerry singing too, and that's not fun. Jerry, oh boy. No, nah, just <laughs> he's uh J- Jerry uh, is not meant to be behind the mic. No. Yeah, I didn't know till like a week ago that he and Doyle were brothers. Oh really? Yep. Yep. Hmm. All right. Sorry, I'm trying to take some notes here. Like I had to write down the oppressive descent, spite is my scepter, blood is my crown. I need to check that out. It's on my list too. Long that was, that was good. Uh, Alchemy Awards, another good one too. Uh, the Alchemy last Awards. one was all right, but not as good as the um, the, the latest one. Uh, this is a new band, uh, and I'm sure you've seen around. It's Twenty bucks spin put this out. Uh, I've been enjoying it just because it hits it hits that nerve center that I enjoy with my dying bride. Nerve band is Tribunal. Uh, the weight of remembrance. And it's you know it, it's they're out of Vancouver, you know, of all places, and uh, you can tell from the uh, just looking at the cover, kind of what you what you would expect. So you know you do get a little bit of that Paradise Lost, uh, My Dying Bride, kind of feel to it. But check out the check out the vinyl if you haven't seen it. It's, it's like it's probably the prettiest thing. <laughs> it's <laughs> pretty. Then, look at this thing. Oh, that is pretty. It's um. That's cool. It's, it's like, like a Easter, jellyfish. It's like Easter egg <laughs> it does. purple. It's got yeah, it's like mother of pearl iridescent. It engorged penis purple. <laughs> I um, it, it was too pretty. I had to I had to snap up uh, th- this right here. I, I I've been I've been buying less and less colored vinyl, which is intentional. But when I see something like this, I'm like, that is just way too pretty. But right. I think that trans clear or transparent vinyl, it's pop- pop- bottom of the barrel for me, just in general. Just because a, I, I can't tell how clean it really is, <laughs> how scratched it really is. Uh, uh, this is a new one. With, with newer vinyl, it's a little easier to handle, but we used is uh, it's kind of a no go for me. But uh, yeah, good band. I, I think we're going to be hearing more more from them. This is their first effort. It just came out last month. Yeah. So, um, so they like the like the old peaceful stuff. Yeah, pretty much. They're pretty much aping that sound. Yeah. So, uh, so like, like Dream 
Dream on ending. Yeah, yes. go ahead, Devin. Dream on ending, yep. Uh, I think would, would be, it's a really good description. Cool. Um, but definitely, uh, again, they're not reinventing the wheel or anything, but if you already like that kind of stuff, I mean, it'll feel right at home. Yeah. So, so like really early My Dying Bride, not Angel in the Dark River, My Dying Bride. They got, well, they got elements of that kind of gothic romantic elements in there. So I could see, yeah, there's a little bit of that in there too. Okay. But yeah, okay. Yeah. I've, I've seen that, but yeah, I had no idea what it would sound like. So didn't pay it much attention. Yep. All right. Cool. Ellen. All right. Uh, let's go with uh, some combination of fun and cheese. Uh, other bands play. That, that was your cue, guys. You missed Channel your cue. War kill. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Need Jason that, Hook in here. We, we, somewhere right now, Jason has a smile on his face. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, found this used. Uh, had never seen this particular thing before. It's a two-CD live album. It's called Gods of War Live. Took me forever to figure out what the heck this crap said standing there in the record store. It's like Sons oh. of... Poor Frank, sons of poor Frank. Oh, yeah. right, I hate when you do fonts like that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it did not make sense. But um, yeah, eventually he's just like, oh, what the hell? I, I look, went through the track list. Like this is a pretty solid track list. Uh, so we'll we'll give it a chance. Why not? And it is. You know, Man of War has got you know a million live recordings out over the past twenty years. Uh, this one, the bottom line is, this was recorded when they were touring after the Gods of War album. Uh, I haven't dug through all the little booklets and stuff to see if it says exactly which songs were recorded in which city. So I do not know that. Tracklist is very good. They basically represent pretty much every album. Uh, I mean, it starts with Man of War, then jumps to Call to Arms, uh, Gloves of Metal. Each Dawn I Die, kind of cool to hear that live on the set. Um, Holy War and Mountains, The Oath is on here. It's a really fast version of The Oath, uh, kind of cool to hear it sped up. Secret of Steel, so lots and lots of stuff from the early albums. Um, God's Made Heavy Metal, so you know they're getting a few of the later tracks in too. Die for Metal, Kings of Metal, uh, Warriors of the World United, Black Wind, Fire and Steel, uh, I think is the last one on disc one. So yeah, d this one is just you. You want live, fun man of war? Here you go. Sounds pretty good. Great track list. The second disc is basically songs from the God of War album, and here's where it just falls right off a cliff. After you've tied all the cute baby animals and stuffed them into the train car full of nitroglycerin and lit a match and just pushed it right off the track. <laughs> uh First off, you know, there's only like seven or eight songs on the second disc, so it's less than half an hour. I always kind of hate it when they do this with double live albums. I get it. Your concert's not long enough for two full CDs, but you probably could have split it up so that each disc was closer in length rather than having one long one and one short one. It just always bugs me. In this case, I'm glad they did because they put all the good stuff on the first disc and the second disc, it's like it starts with The Blood of Odin. Well, that's just a long kind of introductory thing. Uh, you know, you get one real song with the Sons of Odin, then you're on to Glory, Majesty, Unity. We've ranted about that album before. It's just all these interlude after interlude after four-minute introduction. The uh, Mayo and his Cassio. Yeah, and that's what the second disc is. It closes with the crown in the ring, but it's only like a two-minute version of crown in the ring. And they don't play the full song. They just play the chorus over and over and over so the crowd can chant to it, which is kind of cool. I'm sure it was a cool effect you know, with a large live audience. But I will never play the second disc again. Absolutely not. The first disc, yeah, uh, that's just you know fun, crank it up. Check out, you know, a really good track list for Man of War. That second disc, the Gods of Snore crap, no. Don't need that. <laughs> Gods of Snore. <laughs> <clears throat> that's funny. But uh, one, one thing I do have to show, there's a, all kinds of little flowers and stuff in here. This one, this one says so very much about 21st century Man of War's mentality. They have a merch flyer in here. So re ready to do a Yo, hail and kill and get your uh, your merch on. 
<laughs> oh my god. Metal Kids, metal dash kids.com. Uh, hurry on over there. They, they might be almost sold out of uh, the uh, jumper onesie thing. Uh, girls and boys. <laughs> That's not creepy at all. Oh, I, I wish I had photoshopped this together and could tell you this was a joke. This was this is in the this was part of the packaging. <laughs> metal Kids. Metal Kids.com right there. You uh Let's see. What does it say? I haven't even read it. It's probably horrible. Your kid could be a true metal kid too. Metal-kids.com. Cool metal shirts for your kids. Uh, your kids are unique, so you should dress them like this. At the brand new Metal Kids online shop, you get high quality infant shirts, one pieces, and more printed with original band logos or with rockin' slogans. All pieces are highly stylish. I think they're trying to say stylish, but stylish. Stylish, yeah, yeah. Those two words are not close enough Clever. together to do wordplay. Clever. Clever. No, that, that. And real eye catchers. Your kids will be the stars in every toddler group and play school. Wow. That is amazing. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> wow. That's uh, a, I'm, I'm almost <laughs> speechless for that. I, I can Melanie, just... be right back, dragging my kids out of bed and putting them on their man of war pajamas. <laughs> I, I mean, I, you just you know, and just like you know, you know, you know uh, uh, hello, uh, you know, Mr. Rictonin, you know, this is your son's teacher calling. Uh, you know, J Junior keeps calling the other children wimps and posers and insisting I leave the hall. I think we need to have a parent teacher conference. <laughs> Wow. God. <laughs> you know, I, this is, as you're about to pull out that merch thing, I almost said the more money you pay, the more boobs you get on the shirt. And then you pull out this little kid thing, and I'm like, God, I'm glad I didn't say that. <laughs> I'm really glad you didn't say yeah. that. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, I, 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 other bands play, Man of War eats paste and uh, sniffs their boogers. <laughs> Man of War, baby shark, do 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 do. <laughs> but you know, uh, hey, go, go. I tell you what, Marty. While you do it, I'm going to go over and see. This came out around 2007, so it's been a while. While you do your next one, I want to open up another tab in the window here and see if Metal-Kids.com is still in business and what I highly got. doubt that they are. I bet you that I... died on the vine real quick. <laughs> I got a I'm going to find out. Like lullaby CD somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> They're out there. Wow. High and yeah. mighty alone we are kings. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> Go to sleep, little princess. <laughs> mm. I, I uh, want to check it out while you uh while you guys proceed. I'll report back in a minute. Well, it's really that's a hard act to follow, but uh I'm gonna try. Um Tardigrata Emotionale Odinus. Uh, three piece from Switzerland, em atmospheric, emotive black metal. Is a two LP set on Fallen Empire and Eisenwald. It's a split release before Fallen Empire folded. This is I was late to get this album, but it, I've got a stack of about a foot and a half of records sitting underneath a TV in the other room that I bought had to have. Some I've spun once, some I haven't spun at all, and I was going through that pile the other day. <laughs> I'm like, oh, well, yeah, I remember buying this. Put it on. It's quite good. Really good. Kind of depressive um, atmospheric black metal. Very cool. Listen to it twice. Yeah, I really wish I wouldn't do that. I've. It's just one of those things. You get so much damn music. It's It's hard to keep up with it. And there's always new stuff. And then your mood changes. I was off black metal for... I don't know, a good year and a half, two years. And now I'm back onto it, into it again. And it's nice to uh, Hello, find Halloween these... will do that. I'm just, saying. oh, it wasn't just yeah, Halloween. Was it was tons and tons of symphonic and power metal. I just trying to get happy and it helped, but it, you know, didn't help as well as it should have, I guess. But anyway, yeah, that Tartar Grot is a good record. I'm sure it's probably hard to find at this point. I don't know if it's been reissued. Never heard of it. They've only have one other album. Uh, the last thing they put out was Von Bruch Bis Zur Freinheit, 
and that was came out in 2021. I'm sure I nailed it. And yeah, three piece, still active. They're from Z- Zurich, Switzerland. Stay grim. Yeah, yeah. Right on. Um, Sounds interesting. Is it still before we uh, get to Devin? Uh, what's this? What's the story? Oh, there it's active. It's so active. The site is up and running. Uh, yeah, there's there's something that looks like some kind of uh, Iron Maiden pacifier. I'm not making this up. It looks like it's a pacifier with an now Iron lead Maiden. free Iron Maiden pacifier now lead free. <laughs> there's a market for this. They got to pay to keep that site running and everything. It's like someone's shelling dollars. So, someone's buying this stuff. Yep. Uh, it's it's not in English, so uh, I'm guessing it's German. Um, so yeah, it's uh, but yo, yeah, there there there's things here. There's stuff and things. Wow. Uh, yeah. Incredible. I, I'm I'm just going to uh, go ahead and close that now and uh, <clears throat> refocus. But uh, they they it's a thing. <laughs> yeah, LKV is right. I'm not going any deeper on that site. <laughs> yeah, yeah so, 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 there, there's already been a couple of Carl Logan jokes in the uh, comments about that last flyer. So uh, <laughs> I, I didn't see them. That's funny. Yeah, yeah, they're, uh, <laughs> they're 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 funny and sad because they're true. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure he was the one heading up the whole uh, uh, Man of War. He, he, he offered merch, to do all uh, the packaging for free. Yeah, <laughs> we really need to get involved with these guys, guys. I tell mm. you, revolutionizing. Anyway, that's always fun when you film a collection update. You file the stuff away, and a couple minutes later, a couple more records you forgot or to show up. You're like motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> My yes, problem is that. like getting all these records and like filing putting them on discogs or forgetting to and then the ones you don't get mixed in with the ones you did yeah and then i'm sure i've got a, it's, it's like when you buy the milk when you already have some at the fridge and you, right. you, you didn't yeah and then time. one of them goes sour <laughs> <laughs> yeah never buy food line milk food line milk always goes sour faster than any other store's milk yep public service announcement vegetables from aldi too just saying yeah, I mean, Aldi's, you, you know what's happening when you go into Aldi's. Yep. <laughs> Sponsored by Rotten Milk. <laughs> <laughs> this this episode brought to you by Kroger. <laughs> Deicide diapers. <laughs> Once upon the diaper. <laughs> right. Ah, oh, that's a great record. Classic. Yeah. And it's a picture disc, but it's actually in a jacket. And it, doesn't, it doesn't sound like crap, so it's just kind of cool. Yeah. Slow me fiddling percola. This is the, what they call this one? The, the 100 edition. Yeah, yeah, the 100 Years of Finnish Independence Edition. So these guys are pretty crazy. They're like the, dis, the drunken Finnish discharge of black metal, I would say. Like they, they have a lot of punk influence, especially their first three or four records. But yeah, it really gets of... it gets a lot more motorheadish when they hit uh, um, Latex Cult. Oh yeah, definitely. But I know they're playing a festival in a couple months in what is it like Chicago? <laughs> right. The the Metal Threat Fest. It's kind of an odd place for them to come to play. I I look at that lineup and I can't believe that. All these bands are coming over for one show. I just can't believe it. Yeah, I know. I want to see Sinister. That'd be cool, too. But... That would be cool. Yeah. Probably mm, hard to pick a favorite's Eve. Probably I go to Knee Hill the most lately, but this is probably my second favorite. So, yeah. That's a good one. Good, punky, Finnish, crazy black metal. All right, Rick. So, this is the last thing I picked up at the record store. I actually have not spun it yet. But I, I know what it is. I have the other Metal Massacres. So this is 12. Oh, 1995. Wow. And so I'm looking at it I'm like, eh, I'll, I'll gamble on it. And But I'm looking at the uh, roster of names in the back. And I'm like, 1995 was not a very forgiving year at the, <laughs> for a lot of bands. And there's a, uh, I'm looking at these names, you know, I don't know most of these. Tipper Gore. There's another band called Big Twin Din. I mean, I know Ancient. Uh, I know Crisis. And Bugalard. Oh my God. 
I think this is where they started to de- to kind of derail. <laughs> yeah, they, they had already jumped uh, the shark a volume or two back, and uh, yeah, that, that's right. a rough one. I kind of wanted. That's why I pulled that. I'm like, maybe maybe if you guys know any of these bands, I mean, other you know, Alvernus, uh, that's what I've heard of. Mm-hmm. But everybody else, I'm like, I don't know. It, this is going to be quite a ride. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's it's a weird combination of there's several bands on there that didn't need to be on the compilation in terms of getting a push. And then there's all these other bands that never should have probably been on the compilation in the first place. So, yeah, it, it's a very, it's a weird volume. That one, 11, I think it's like 10, 11, 12 all have that same kind of problem. The thing, too, it's like some of these names I've never seen before. I've never seen ever again, like level. Mm hmm. Or they like this, you know. And then or ancients what? on that list. I mean, that's one of the yeah. only bands on there I've heard of. Yeah, guys, we gotta come up with a killer name for our band. Really, you know, take the world by storm. What should we go with, dude? How about level? <laughs> They're on another level. <laughs> yeah, Avernus is on there. Yeah, I've heard of them. Yeah, I like Avernus. Yeah. What yeah. song is it by Avernus, Rick? Just out of curiosity. Oh, um, well, day. They- Glam Rick Cat. That's ancient. Oh, wait. Uh, oh, Godlessness. Okay, that's probably relatively yeah. early for Avernus then. So, yeah, Avernus was kind of, they were kind of trying to do some of the peaceful stuff, I think, at one point, but then yeah. they got very more, you know, uh, goth, uh, rock metal oriented. They did both, they did well with both styles, but they changed their sound a lot. I'm still trying to figure out Big Twin Din, and I don't know what came about. There's got to be a story behind that. Well, is there anything good on there when you listen to it? Is there like other than the ones that are obvious? Oh, that's what I'm saying. I just got it, so I haven't. Oh, okay, right on. yet, but is that a eulogy from Florida? Mark is asking. Don't know. I don't know. Either. As long as it's called Human Harvest, if that helps. Hmm. Yeah. So. It's Metal Massacre. I think I'll just throw it with the rest of the, the batch, but I don't think I'm going to be returning to this one a whole lot. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that the right was, price. A, it was like three bucks. Yeah. It's funny. Oh, yeah. It's worth picking up and just having yeah. some fun with for that for sure. But yeah. Yeah. That, that series got, you know, even up through volume seven, you can still say they were making a, you know, a serious attempt to like try out bands you know that you know they were actually you know digging up some bands that you know had some promise about them and giving them a shot you know hey throw them out there and see which bands people like Uh, but yeah then you get into those double digit volumes and i I just don't understand what they were trying to do with it i I just really don't understand what the point of those volumes was that those the bands either are not even close to being marketable or ready to roll out there or it's bands that were already so established that you didn't need them on a compilation like that there i don't know it's weird it's gotta be a pain in the ass trying to put one of those together just you know well that too i mean and that's you know compilations were still really popular at that time maybe they just felt like you know they needed to have you know a share of that metal blade was guilty of that sometimes in the mid 90s where everyone else is doing it i guess we should too that that whole uh we were yep. talking about it earlier with Devin, the Canaan Chronicle album that always a little bit felt like metal blades, you know, ran out and got the first black metal band signed. They could because black metal is a thing. And Hey, we should have some of that too. I but actually what? listened to that album a month or two ago. Oddly um, enough, it's not bad. It's not a bad record. It is. List- it is. It is listenable. Yeah. It, all jokes aside, it's what not they a did afterwards. Album. Not so much, but that one was still pretty good yeah debut's I'll, great yeah jokes aside the the if you can get past the vampire cheesiness part of it yeah you know, the, the white wolf role-playing <laughs> larping uh it's not that bad but it always felt like metal blade really just you know re- reached out there and you know ancient was the first ones who raised their hands we like a label please okay you come with me they don't tell them who they're going to be lumped in with you know so it's, it's like a what sam what kind of sandwich am i going to be part of like I <laughs> yeah <laughs> I don't know. That's my. Uh, I, I'm done rambling about mid '90s <laughs> metal blade decisions. Oh, but you get to show. You get to ramble some more. <laughs> oh, is it my turn? <laughs> Your turn. Okay. Well, uh, here. This is something Scott uh, Wilcox sent. He's got uh, the No Solution channel up and running. Lots of fun videos. Um, did somebody say European power metal? 
Swedish. Swedish European power metal. Sweden's in Europe. Yep. Yep. Uh, Nocturnal Rights, New World Messiah. This is their fifth album, early 2000s. Um, it's a very solid album. This is one I had back in the day, but at some point when I had to thin out, you know, the power metal stuff, this is one I had let go of, um, which was a mistake because years later I married somebody who really likes Nocturnal Rights. And so I was like, honey, where's the fifth Nocturnal Rights album? We don't have it. Why not? She's still going to kick my ass for making I was going to say, she, I don't sound like that. <laughs> I hope she's asleep already. You're dead. <laughs> There's a 50% chance she's asleep. There's a 50% chance I'm sleeping on the couch. She doesn't sound like, doesn't sound like olive oils, we're just saying. Okay. Hello, kitty litter box. I'm snuggling up next to you tonight. I <laughs> uh, hope the fresh scent stick is brand new. <laughs> this is a good place. We got a 17 pound tabby. When that thing takes a dump, you evacuate the neighborhood. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, anyway, so uh, it's cool to get this one back. It's a perfectly fine Nocturnal Rights album. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just that it was starting with this album, Nocturnal Rights had kind of found their place and they stayed in their place. You know, leading up to this, you know, they had, you know, four really excellent albums where you felt like they were kind of, you know, going from strength to strength. Between albums three and four, they changed vocalists, but the fourth album with the new vocalist turned out really incredible. And at this point, they just kind of, you know, it's like, all right, here's our niche. We're going to settle in very comfortably and make quality, but kind of interchangeable albums for a little bit, which is why this one, you know, didn't stick long term. But it is a solid release if you like that kind of stuff. And Nocturnal Rights does European power metal better than 95% of the competition. Like most scenes, there's a ton of bands out there that you can check out. Uh, but there's a reason Nocturnal Rights has been around and doing it for, they've been around for 30 years, but they have some annoyingly long gaps between albums. So, but uh, regardless, good catalog, good album. And thank you to Scott for sending that one along. Uh, nice to put it back on the shelf. When did Afterlife come out? That one's my favorite. That's the fourth one. That's the one before this. Yeah. Then that one is a real banger. And yes, uh, Mark's right. They started out as a death metal band, like a, an extreme metal band. And, but pretty early on, they changed directions. Uh, they got under Zacherson who had sung on the Gotham city stuff or some of the Gotham city stuff back in the early eighties. And all of a sudden, yeah, they kind of, by the time they released the first album, they were doing this really you know, grand yeah, European power metal in the style of you know Halloween, Gamma Ray, that kind of stuff. But yeah, I guess I don't know. I've never heard any of their uh, demos or stuff early on. But they had started out. That's why they've got such kind of a weird name. Nocturnal Rights is a little odd sounding for European power metal. But uh, yeah, the name was the one thing that kind of carried over from their uh, yeah more extreme phase. Let's see, hey, there's Jurgen. Hello, Jurgen. We've Hello. been talking about a lot of German metal tonight. Yeah, we've you've missed all the German. You missed the German portion of the evening, my friend. I think so. Marty, you got any more German metal to uh, to show? Uh, nope, I don't. I spent it all already. Sad. I have a German sounding one. All well, right, let me see here. I think these guys are German. Hmm. All right, this one here. Cerebral Rot, Odious Descent into Decay. This, everybody's ranting and raving about their most recent one. I picked it up on vinyl. Little lukewarm to it. I'm like, cool sound. Grotesque art. Cartoonish, but grotesque art. Um, I ended up getting the CD version of this at the same time. Preferred it greatly. I think the music on this is way more uh, interesting little bit better well written more uh, better written um album as well these guys i believe are from the u.s am i wrong no so, the, the west east i think or west north i think seattle maybe okay northwest gotcha yeah um it's just the the if you're not familiar with cerebral rot it's basically kind of what's going on in death metal right now the down tune polluted heavy as hell um super powerful death metal these guys really bring the riffs and have some good songs on here i like them and then i might as well show the vinyl it's pretty it's pretty it's 
since we're showing pretty vinyl tonight. We like pretty. <laughs> they have an awesome live band. Are they? Yeah, yeah that is cool. Vinyl. That's a very twenty bucks spin thing. It's like and trying the, to... and it actually fits the aesthetic mm -hmm. of the record perfectly. Very cool. So, yep. There you go, cerebral rot. Yeah, that one's more like autopsy. The new one's kind of more like broken hope. I'm with you, Evan. Exactly. I enjoy this one much more than the new one as well. The new one's fine. It's just, I thought it was kind of boring, kind of predictable. This here, I mean, yeah, they're they're in a, they're you know within a well traveled medium, but uh, style yeah. of music. But it, it they do a good job of, um, in it. We must be a friend of list, like the uh, the the previous album, the Desolate Landscape. Kind of kind of has that vibe for me. Has a member of Caustic Wound and Fetid. Now, Fetid, I have that on CD as well. One of their more recent ones. And I thought that was kind of boring. I like the sound. I think they're heavy. Kind of boring. Kind of doing, it sounds like a bunch of other bands. Anyway, we're not talking about them right at the moment. Uh, what am I doing? Devin. It's, it seems like uh, managing this stuff is a lot more difficult when I'm not drinking than it is when I'm... <laughs> Three sheets to the wind at this point in the stream. It's very strange. Anyway, go ahead. So did someone say uh, Germany by way of Norway? <laughs> uh, that's that, they're a good band. I like I like all the Death Hammer stuff. It's good. The newest one is really kick ass. That's another yeah. one. Don't judge a book by its cover. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Kind of a <laughs> stupid artwork, like pretty cheesy, but great record though. Like yeah. if. Yep. Early Destruction were from Brazil, maybe? I don't get the Brazil thing so much, but maybe. Destruction for sure. I mean, like, Early Sepultura, maybe. Like, Bestial, Devastation, mm. the first album. But... Yeah, maybe. Well, much better produced production. We, yeah, it doesn't sound like a toilet, kind yeah. of. But... Yeah. But yeah, I don't know what they called this version. Like, the... We and call it America, son. America, <laughs> the America covered. They um. Is I need to get Asian that record. There's another band in that style called Butcher. They're quite good as oh, well. Oh yeah, the yeah. six 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 bury my something. Uh, six hundred sixty six goats carry my chariot or something. Yeah, that's yeah. been on. That's been on my wish list. I still need to get that. But yeah, I have the CD. It's really good. Good yep, stuff. Yep. That one's solid. Yeah. Not like green. Witcher in that style. Marty, know you're not as big on them. What's that? I like Bewitcher in that style. I didn't like the Bewitcher. I, I know surprised. you're not as big on that one, yeah. But I like that one. Yeah, there's good, been a lot right? of bands operating in that style. Uh, Demiser is pretty good in that style. I don't get Niflheim because they don't really have any black metal. But oh well, not reinventing the wheel, but a fun record nevertheless. Agreed. Despite the kind of terrible cover art. <laughs> yeah. Part of the charm, Scott, though. We were talking about you a minute ago, Scott. You might need to send me a link to his channel. I don't know if I'm subscribed. Okay, we you will said, make, that, yeah. We yeah, make yeah. that happen. Sure. Rick. <clears throat> All right. Um, we got a classic from Peru. Um, I haven't looked it up, but I think they're one of the first Peruvian death metal bands. Oh, one oh, of it's great Mortal, stuff. Demon Tales. Great album. Uh, they definitely ate that Florida sound. Um, it's, it's got that, you know, the thrashiness to it, which is, you know, you hear in the classic death metal. I heard uh, a little bit of possessed in that, too. La, la, yeah, guy sounds like Jeff. Yeah, <laughs> which is, yeah this is great. <laughs> but uh, this wasn't the original cover either. Like, the original cover had, uh, it's like, what's the one Reverend Bazaar uh, used with the, um, with the, uh, with the gold and the, uh, I forget it. But it's that, it's that painting I see everywhere. <laughs> so I'm glad this, I got, I'm glad it changed to this. Uh, I think it was on, on a follow-up pressing. But this is definitely a cool recent pickup that I'm glad to have. Um, but yeah. It's cool. that, that's the debut full length, right? Yeah. yeah all I have is the, the Evil Dead EP, but I like it a lot. Yeah, I, I, I like all their stuff. I got to go back and get the rest of it, but it's really good. I imagine what this, what this team might have been like at the time. Probably not not very much, you know, in, in Peru, you know, considering, you know, with, with everything that was going on, just seeing these kind of bands, especially putting out this kind of quality, you know, at the time. You, you, you were definitely entrenched in that American scene. Uh -huh. But, yeah, good stuff. More of them. Isn't that a Kansas record? <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, the painting is called The Witch's Sabbath. That's what it was, yeah. yeah. Mm. I forget the name, but... Thank you, Evan. <laughs> All right, Alan. All right. Uh, early, early 80s time, uh, a known band called Full Moon. Um, this is a straddling that kind of 70s hard rock to 80s heavy metal transition, the way that stuff like very early Riot uh, tries to do. Kind of a cool album. It's one of those that you know had a small private pressing back in the day, and the album got very, very hard to find over time because it kind of appeals to the early 80s metal collectors, and it kind of appeals to the you know hard rock collectors as well. And a lot of the songs on it are just very good. It's got really nice guitar work. Songs are really good. It's come out with different names and different titles over time. This particular one, I think, is a, yeah, this is a Shadow Kingdom uh pressing so night calls is not the original name of the album it's got the album on it but it's got a lot of bonus stuff so they gave it uh, a different look the album originally is just called full moon uh the pressing that you saw for a long time had the original cover art but was uh, given a title state of the artist so it, it's a little confusing because it's basically the same album every time but the name and the cover art can be a little bit different. But, you know, the band, you know, admittedly in some of the interview stuff, they're like, yeah, you know, we were kind of, you know, right there. We kind of fell in between the cracks a little bit because we didn't quite fit either style just right. We weren't quite heavy enough to make a go of it as metal became more and more popular in the 80s. But they were good at what they did. And, you know, they had, you know, developed a following over the years. It was just kind of a, case of you know being in the wrong place at the wrong time a little bit not really their own fault it's also worth pointing out there's some other bands from around that time that also use the name full moon there's a british band that did an album it's got a kind of a weird spacey cover art to it and i think they're a little bit more of like a spacey prog rock kind of band than this one uh, but again with this one having different names and covers I've seen that one, and sometimes it's like, I ah, wait, I'm pretty sure that's the other full moon. And it's not that unusual of a name. So if you're interested in checking it out, you, you just have to be a little careful that you're checking out the right band. But yeah, they've got a good set of songs. It's very, very early 80s metal. This is when, like, you know, the rods and virgin steel are like cutting edge heavy metal. You know, you're a couple of years before anything like Kill 'em All is going to come out. But yeah, I just I had this digitally. I never had picked up a, a hard copy of it. I found it you know, for just a few bucks, and I don't mind having it on the CD shelf. Not something I'll play a ton of, but I have a soft spot for that early 80s stuff that's trying to be heavy metal, and it's right there on the cusp. Uh, but it, you know, maybe you need a just, a, just a little bit more uh, metal street cred to get across the line. Where are they from? I believe. Let me check. I want to say they're from the they were from the New Jersey area, but I may be just pulling that out of my butt. Uh, Pennsylvania. Okay. I was close. It looks kind of like second tier Italian doom for some reason. This picture and layout is kind of weird looking. It is making it look kind of spooky. It's really not. It definitely is not. This is. Uh, you know, again, if folks like those first couple of Riot albums with Guy Speranza singing, or uh, for folks that know, like, you know, Crisis, Hard as a Rock album, you're more in that vein on this stuff. But, you know, again, maybe just take just a teeny little bit of the heavy metal out of those, and you're right where Full Moon is at. But, yeah, I don't know why Shadow Kingdom tried to make it look like it was spooky. It's, it's, that's not really. Uh, part of their thing whatsoever Just sell a few more records probably <laughs> uh, probably i mean this is the uh here this is the picture that's actually on the cover <laughs> of the original album yeah i mean it's it's a very 70s yeah kind of looking jam thing. Lindsay buckingham from fleetwood mac was in the band for a minute it looks like there in the center <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, so that's that's more where they're operating at than uh, some kind of fright night thing going on all right marty take it away sir 
Okay, um, this is another one of those hype bands that I was late to the party on because I don't always follow that, and I kind of wish I jumped on this when it came out. The Night, um, mm. Voices of the Cronian Moon. I actually found this on Discogs, I think, for under 20 bucks shipped. Um, and it was actually someone that watches the show. They wrote a nice letter. Um, Alex, thanks again. Lac, lacrib, lacrib, macabre. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> cheers. Great, uh, great record. This thing is in the traditional metal vein, but it sounds like they tuned down a little bit. It's a really good, heavy sound. The vocalist, super unique vocal style. You, you would think it would be, you know, pitch singing or falsetto. It's not. The guy, I've heard no one else mention this, but it sounds kind of like the the baron from amoebics singing a little bit more melodious than the baron but the kind of a grovelly speaking tone it, it kind of sounds like the baron i don't know middle era amoebics vocals but um i really like this record really good it's really well written there's some amazing guitar solos on here they're um very uh technical but they they maintain a an aura of um, um, catchy hooks. It's great. It's a great record. There it does. There's one thing that bugs me in here, but I'm not gonna tear it apart to show it. Um, get this record if you haven't heard it. It's their second album. The other one I have not. Uh, oh yeah, okay. Res Metal. Everybody go check out his channel too. Very cool channel. Night remind me of the Immortal Side Project. I very trad metal with black metal vocals. Yeah, it's a. T totally a uh, catchy album, Nate. Yep, heavier and less trad. Like I said, it, it's it's it leans into the trad style, but they sound like they have uh, they've tuned down a step or two. It's good stuff. Really good record. Devin. So speaking of unique sounding for the style, the Necromantia, Scarlet Evil, Witch in Black. Very odd sounding because they use two basses. They don't have an actual guitar, so it's a very unique sound. But at first, it's kind of hard to tell you if they have a keen ear. But after the first couple of listens, you can definitely tell there's not a traditional guitar. So for some reason, I'm kind of late, late convert with the Greek stuff. But Me too. definitely very interesting record. It doesn't sound like anything else. I haven't heard anything after this, so I don't know if it's good or not. But... Definitely my favorite of the first two records. I know they reissued it a while recently with terrible cover art. It was extremely cheesy, but I think this was put out through Osmos in 2014, so I'm not sure how hard it is to get, but yeah. Definitely one of the better records from the older Greek scene, I think from 94, maybe. The one that came out before that with Dracula on the cover is I don't like that record. I yeah, it's kind of boring. It's really not good. That's a good record, though. Very Crossing cool. the Fiery Path. Yeah. Yep. It's okay, but this one's better. Yeah. They kind of took while Riding Christ was doing and went the other the other direction, <laughs> which is interesting. Okay. Rick. So this is a band that's new to me, actually, uh, considering I like a lot of the Death Doom. I guess this will fall under the funeral stuff. This is a band out of the Netherlands called Fal, F A or Fal, F A A L. Uh, so this is their 2018 album, uh, Desolate Grief. You can kind of just look at that, and it's very obscure and really hard to tell what's going on there. But this is a uh, put up by Van Records. Uh, that's a name I trust. They put yep. out a lot of a lot of really good stuff. So that kind of what made me check it out, um, being that it's like five tracks kind of gives you an idea that this is a uh, quite a dense album of everything going on. I mean, if, if you're already, you know, into the, uh, I guess the Vulcan esoteric stuff, uh, it's got, it's got, it's got that atmosphere. It's got that, it's got that feel. Um, it's got some really good riffy moments uh, like, like Morgion. So this is definitely, uh, you know, again, this, this is, this, this kind of stuff is in your wheelhouse. Definitely check it out. Um, so I'm going to go back and get their other stuff. I kind of wish I knew about them sooner. They, um, I know they formed some sometime in the early 2000s. Hmm. But uh, 
Yeah, no, no fancy color or anything, just straight black, which, you know, works really well for this. <laughs> but um, nice thick sleeve, too. Um, they came with this. But, yeah. Sweet. Really enjoyed it. Really good songwriting, really good compositions. Uh, and, and with this kind of stuff, uh, if you're trying to get into these kind of bands, it's not really a thing. I think a lot of the reasons is because the slow buildup and all that stuff, it's kind of a slow burn and it can get boring. You know, um, this one didn't really do that to me. This really kept my interest. Hmm. You said it was Desolate Grief? Desolate Grief. Desolate Grief. Yeah. I'll have to check that out. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. And Jeff, that's crazy that you saw Full Moon back in the day. That's really cool, man. Oh, wow. All right. Alan. Hmm. All right. Getting towards the bottom of the stack here. Yeah, I got one more. Yep. Uh, somebody said Greek black metal. I know they did. Uh, and uh, this was lurking in the bottom of the stack, too. Uh, finally got a physical copy of uh, Passage to Arturo. Uh, kind of their first real black metal release. Um, I didn't realize the band had been around before this in more of kind of a grind mode at one point. That was new to me when I started looking into it. Uh this one, I just, ne I thought I had heard all the early Rotting Cry stuff, but when I got to looking at this one, I was like, I don't think I actually do know this one. And sure enough, yeah, this one was new to me. So it was kind of interesting to check out. Um, early Rotting Cry stuff is very fun. This one doesn't have the drum machine sound that you associate with, you know, the you know, non Servium and other releases from that era. But yeah, uh, this particular pressing of it has uh, bonus tracks from the 7-inch uh, EP, Dawn of the Iconoclast, and a couple of other tracks, too. I'm not sure where they all come from, if they're from uh, other splits or demos. But yeah, it's I mean, folks are familiar with Rotting Christ. I just wasn't familiar with this particular release. I thought, somebody, I thought I had all their early stuff back in the tape trading days, but uh, apparently this one slipped past me. Hey. I think Floga did a box set a while ago that has all their demos. I think you're right. Yep. Yep. Uh, somebody, it may have been actually Scott, no solution might have shown that recently. He did a box set video. I know he's got a, a box, a running Christ box set uh, usually behind him. So I think it's that one. All right. Well, my last one, I mean, just because it's my last one, you guys more have more. Go ahead and rip through them. That's fine. But um, my first review for Heavy Metallurgy, I checked out the promo for this, the third Miss oh, yeah. Thurming record called Med Homry. Miss Thurming or Miss Firming. I listened to the album probably a good six times before I reviewed it and really ended up liking it quite a bit and got this for a good price. It's these guys are Icelandic. I had not heard any other other releases. This album rips. It has a bit of a Norwegian modern black metal vibe. Um, really harsh, grim style vocals. The music can adopt some synth work here and there, and it gets very symphonic, atmospheric, and grim sounding at times. And then in between all the tracks, there's like these ambient pieces that flow throughout the whole thing it's it's a really solid record it made me a believer i picked this up and i'm going to probably check out the other two as well when i when they come across my path it does wade totally rules yep total good one nate absolutely but yeah if you guys haven't heard it check out my review and then go check it out it's good fun stuff very cool Devin, have you heard the this is the last one I have not heard it. Though I like the Icelandic scene, a lot of the bands kind of share the same members, so it kind of gets... Yeah. Samey, let me show you. Let's do a classic. I need, need to revisit. Mm, classic. Uh, yep. Donna Possession is probably my favorite, but they don't have a bad record in their discography. They some don't. are, some are better don't. than others, but awesome live band too. So yeah, so that was I my, don't, my introduction to them. That album right there is rules. I don't think I was alive for a single one of these records I showed tonight. 
<laughs> <laughs> Maybe one, but oh well. Yeah, 96, so I was negative two when this came out, but oh well. <laughs> negative two. Yeah, is that Fahrenheit really- or Celsius? <laughs> <laughs> that one is a really, really good album in their catalog. Yeah, definitely. They still are, but on this, this is definitely when they were even more anti-religious. I mean, just look at the song titles. Yeah. Nail to God, bone with Jesus, I feel nothing away from God, towards the earth, Christ cage. Yeah. Stellar mm-hmm. record. Comes with a giant poster. I'm not going to pull that out, though. Yeah. yeah. It's funny, you know, people sometimes refer to that as kind of a, you know, a proggy or technical death album. And it's really not. I mean, they're very good at what they're doing, but uh, they're not you know, they're not doing anything extremely complicated. They're just doing it extremely well. No one sounds like them. You, the second you hear one of the riffs, you know it's them. Yeah. Yeah, Robert has a very unique like style. Like I get know right away when I hear it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. they're much, and they they always do a good job of writing songs, not just making death metal, but actually crafting really good songs. Yeah, yeah. All right, Rick. All right, it it seems like there's a theme with me. Like I'm 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 a fan of the reissues, so I've been picking up a lot of these lately. So not too much of what you call the new stuff, um, but I've been picking up a lot of these. And remember this? Yeah. So. Century Media put it out. It's about time. Every, I feel like every time this gets reissued, it gets snapped up right away, and it goes for stupid money. <laughs> and um, great, great album. So, uh, a devastation. Um, so, the way the way I was introduced to them was when I picked up the um, this it was five dollars at the store. Violent termination, and this skull was cut out. Oh Jesus! I didn't know what was there. Christ! So like, why would they go, do that? Let me go check. Let me go check this out. I'll put it on. This is not good. Oh my um, god! <laughs> uh, so it kind of uh, just gave me a bad, bad taste of this band for a while before I decided to uh, to check them out again. So this was recommended to me. I go, I don't know. Is this, is this the band that put this out? I don't know. You know. And then I gotta say, this is one of my favorite thrash records of all time, right here. This is I, I love this album so much. Um, but very, very jarring going from this to this. <laughs> But uh, I'm I'm glad I'm glad um, it's back. You know, I, I just wish uh, somebody else other than Central Media put it out. But <laughs> at, least, at least at least it's available. Nice, so what's nice what's the yellow. what's the name on the album before that one? Uh, Violent termination. Violent termination. Yeah. I don't think that was the one before. That. There's another one. Bef- I think after this Signs one. of Life is another one too. Signs of Life. That yeah. was really good too. But, uh, the de- the debut kind of sucks. Yeah, um, and I, I should have known there was a skull there. I, so, so, so right somewhere in someone's living room or bedroom, there's a there's a piece of a skull hanging on the wall that I need I need returned, please. So if you guys have it, <laughs> it was probably cut out and taped to someone's guitar, or that could be that. Oh, check out this skull! It's so creepy. <laughs> <laughs> Which is all right. I won't be I won't be spending this one much uh, anyway. Um, but this right here, this is where it's at. That's a cool one too. Where it's like a, it's got like a cutout slipcase kind of thing. So this is like an actual border. I don't know if you've seen that that version. The other one's got a die cut on it too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very intentional die cut. <laughs> yeah, custom a custom die cut. That's you pay extra for those. Uh, yeah. So I don't know. Was it worth the five dollars? Uh. <laughs> yeah, it's worth five dollars. But man, that just infuriates me. It's not a great record, but it, it's, it's if that's I mean, an OG, really if it's an OG press, you probably gotta get it. Probably even worth something, you know? Yeah, <laughs> they put it on their kids' pajama shirt. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> and then they sold it uh, and advertised it in Man of War live albums. That's, that's exactly right. I feel like this was like a silent reissue too. So like, if you've been looking for this, head on over to Century Media. I had like, no idea that was reissued. No <laughs> clue. Uh, it's century media, 300 though. It's 300, uh, as far as I know. So that's not even like a so it's gonna go pretty quickly. Um, you know, if you, if you, if you weren't aware, what's up, TJ? So it was a super overpriced because it's century media, yeah. That's what bothered me about it, but I wanted it that much, so <laughs> I was like, damn it. <laughs> so on 20, uh, Melanie says $25 on Amazon it, right now. Go, go, go. I always forget to check Amazon. 
I got it over the holidays. So they might just ship it in a in a. They wrap it with some butcher paper and ship it that way. <laughs> they, yeah. they might cut I, another I patch off of Rick's album cover and use that as the main <laughs> the label. Stiffener. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amazon's like, someone order a pizza. You just throw it across the fence. That's basically what they do. Hate it. <laughs> All right, hey, Alan. You... All right, last one. Uh, only final thing I pulled to show. But uh, found this locally also. Wow, across... you've been the king of bootlegs <laughs> lately. What's going on? <laughs> it kind of weird that a few of them, yeah, showed up. It's uh, probably all from I... the same guy. It probably so. Probably is. But yeah, this I don't think this is a particularly old Celtic Frost bootleg. Uh, as usual, there's no date on it. But it is, uh, it's called Procreation of the Wicked, but the bottom line is it's a, you know, alleges to be a rehearsal of the band from June 1984, which puts it within about the first month or so after the band had adopted the Celtic Frost moniker ah. and got, you know, a lineup uh, put together up and running. So you take the date, of course, for what it is. Uh, you never know. The sound quality, I played it once. The sound quality is quite good for you know, whatever the source material they had was, was actually pretty clean. And it's you know, got, you know, most of what you'd expect on, you know, an early Celtic Frost set. Uh, you've got Return to the Eve, Messiah, Into Crypt of Rays, Visions of Mortality, Procreation of the Wicked, one of my favorites by them, uh, Morbid Tales, Dethroned Emperor, and Nocturnal Fear. Uh, I haven't really had a chance to pay enough attention to this to see if these versions, you know, sound noticeably different to you know, what came out later on. So that's going to be a project if I have time this weekend or next to, you know, sit down, put this on the turntable, put you know, morbid tales in the CD player and try to sort of play them side by side to see what, uh, you know, what nuances I can kind of pick up. But uh yeah, it's just sitting there in the used bin. It's like, I I, I will give twenty dollars for you know vintage Celtic Frost bootleg material. I I have no problem with that. I can do that. And uh, I'm just shocked. That, uh, it sounds decent. That's that blows me away because they record they rehearse in those an old bunker that crazy bunker scene. Yeah, yeah I wasn't ex you know I, usually with bootlegs I don't expect anything. And this one I put on the first time. It's like ah, that. That actually sounds pretty clean, all things considered. So maybe I'll play it again and realize it sounds like you know junk, and I just wasn't paying enough attention. But uh, I, yeah, I mean, it is Celtic Frost is not exactly high brown material. <laughs> yeah, it's not exactly like you're you know listening to you know bootleg Adele material or something. <laughs> <laughs> you can see the little print in the bottom of "Mastering" by Dan Swano. It's the it's somewhere in there. <laughs> okay, Devin. <laughs> uh, Melanie, you're very funny tonight. My wife's still mad at you over that Celtic Frost expenditure, though. I'm the one that brought it to your attention after I saw it on Melanie's channel. Uh, you get a free pass, but uh, apparently she's uh, she's going after she she blames the source. She's going straight to the source on that one. <laughs> All right. If Melanie hadn't made that video, I could have afforded gas. We wouldn't have had to have siphoned it out of the neighbor's car. Oh, you are so flirting with disaster. <laughs> All right. Devin. So this is decapitated with the first dam. So this is includes their two demos when they were like 14 or something. I don't know how they were this good at so, such a young age, but put out through nuclear blast. I didn't buy it through them because the last three times they've canceled my order for no reason, so Thanks, Nuclear Blast, for that. But this has, I think, they songs... you couldn't handle it. <laughs> Maybe. So this has songs from their 98 demo, Eyes of Horror, and from their 97 demo, which I think Eyes of Horror, Bless, The First Dam, and Nine Steps ended up on their debut ones of creation. But yeah. They've definitely changed style recently. They became a lot more groovy, but their first few, they were definitely more a technical death metal band. So, yeah. Look at these little boys. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, I know. On their debut, the drummer was like 15. You tell 15 year old to play that stuff, no thank you. You won't be able to. Yeah. Let 
good release. I don't know if they have copies still Nuclear Blast. You may be able to check, but good luck actually getting something from them. But, oh. I've had good luck with them, honestly. So far, knock on wood. Hopefully it stays that way. All right, Rick. So this is a pretty good band. I don't see them mentioned all that often. Um, named after um, an, an Ocelot album, Power From Hell. Uh, from um, Brazil. Cool cover art. Um, yeah. Profound Evil Presence. It's not the latest one. I think this is the the one before the latest one. But um, this, they're like a hodgepodge of different styles. There's like mm-hmm. elements of black and thrash, um, first wave black metal. Uh, you know, this is definitely even even a little onslaught um, for good measure. Um, let me just look at that. <laughs> So definitely, definitely. Uh, so it just encapsulate all that with the South American sound, you know, pretty much what you get here. So really, really good stuff. Um, I pretty much like all their albums. Uh, the True Metal, their debut, is probably still my favorite. Uh, just the raw, I so like how primal it is and just how vicious. But I mean, all their stuff is pretty good. Uh, I think High Roller, yeah, High Roller put this one out. Um, I wish they didn't go with the shiny. I'm not always a big fan of the shiny. <laughs> Matt would have been just fine. But uh, yeah, really, really good stuff. So I don't know if you're familiar. I don't see the mention all that much, but definitely worth Never heard of them. Um, I saw them last year. I think they mostly played modern stuff because it sounded kind of Swedish black metal, but the early stuff was more black thrash. Yeah. Uh, depending on the album, they, they teeter totter between all these different styles. Um, but it's pretty good. I mean, again, I hear a little bit of first wave black metal, a little bit of bulldozer, <laughs> you know, a little bit of a. Uh, uh, yeah, influence of German. Yeah, and, and the album covers are ridiculous, especially their older ones. Yeah, we might get demonetized, so I don't want to show that too long. Yeah, you know, Frederick. Ha- yeah, I'm pretty sure you do, Frederick. <laughs> All right, uh, Devin, it's back to you. I think me and Alan are done. Okay, so let's do. Did someone say Norwegian kind of cheesiness? That's a good album. I like that yeah. album. I figured out why they stopped being kind of good after this. They lost the guy in the top hat. <laughs> <laughs> this very this was, detrimental to their awesomeness. Wasn't he in Nightwish? I don't know. I <laughs> Maybe, top but. hats in them. <laughs> top, top hat cult black metal. But their first three records are awesome. Check out what the favorites on this one. Probably Spellbound or Torment of Christian Souls. I kind of like the two after this, but they definitely got even cheesier. And then Spiritual Black Dimensions came after that, right? That's a good record. Yeah. yeah. And then the one with the naked chick. Yep. But after that, no bueno. But the first few records are also awesome, free. Yeah. Definitely in line with the old like Emperor style before they got super keyboard symphonic and in your face with the yeah stuff all right rick i got a really odd bird here uh so this is a philadelphia band i did not know about it's a classic album came out in 90 1990 1991 it's it's kind of a it's like speed thrash uh it's called dead spot built in pain i've never heard of them uh, because they were kind of like a one and done band. No, I think they had one more. Al- they had one album before this one, and then this was the last thing they put out. And um, if you look here, it looks like it's it's signed. It says Jack something. So I was looking through, trying to figure out who the hell's Jack. I'm I'm going through all this, but and then uh, come to find out, this is um this is produced by Jack Jack and Dino. Uh, you know who did all those all that '90s Seattle stuff. And uh, so uh, the reason this is such an odd bird is because when I was listening to this, it did have something I couldn't quite put my finger on it. And it had a very familiar kind of aura about it. And again, they're from Philly. It's thrash. But it had that sort of 90s grunge production kind of feel to it. And I think Jack and Dino had a lot to do with it. Um as you guys know, Jack himself uh, had his own band. Uh, uh, Matt Cameron of Soundgarden was in the band with him. And I think they had a lot to do with the uh, the influence. I, th- I think this was the only album he uh, he produced with this band. Uh, I don't think he did the first one. 
So the, this coming out in the, in the early nineties, uh, very very. This is this is very good though. It's it's, it's, it's but it, again, it's an odd bird, and it, it sounds very much of its time. Uh, but this was this was a really good buy. Uh, again, I've never heard of the band, but uh, this is definitely something that um, I'm make, I'm making sense of the cover too. It's this built in pain, and there's a sort of a sort of missile or something, <laughs> and, and and this person's rib cage. Oh. So yeah. This is something. It looks very much like a hardcore album. You kind of you look at this, yeah. kind of has that look to it. Mm. Um, but very cool. Uh, if you see this in a used rack somewhere or whatever, like definitely pick it up. Um, but yeah, it 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 it's, it has its own little sound. Uh, yeah, it, it, I used that word before hodgepodge. This is a mix of different things going on. But uh, I think the production is what makes this kind of stand out and. You know, if if you're a fan of that sort of that early '90s Seattle kind of sound, but with with the thrash thrown in, um, yeah, this is a uh, interesting. Looks like a Ministry side project album, kind of. That too, yeah, <laughs> yeah with the X-ray thing. Slayer in chains. Slayer in chains. Yeah, a little bit of that. Dead spot. One word. Hmm. Right on. Um. Devin, go ahead and run through the rest of yours, and we'll have Rick run through the rest of his, and we'll we'll call it. Uh, we'll get uh, Professor Cross Perverter in bed before one tonight. <laughs> if I'm allowed right. in the bed. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Gathering. Good album. Great album. Maybe my favorite Testament contentious choice, but... Yeah. It's up there. So you guys doing a deep dive with Matt on Testament? I think Matt has called dibs on Testament at some point. Not cool okay. to see. I'm, I'm glad you remember that because I don't. I didn't. Okay. So there's that one. Thank you, Melanie. Maybe taking you up on that. <laughs> Dimensions of horror. So obviously, every album they guys do, they choose in in the style of death. So I think this is the one that they did for Human. Maybe. Hmm. Hmm. They didn't cover any death yet, but I saw an interview with Matt Harvey, and he said basically every song is they take a death song and rearrange the riffs. <laughs> right. So basically every song they do is kind of an actual death song with different riff structures. So there's a finite uh, expiration date to the this project then, I'm assuming? <laughs> yeah, pretty much, but I know he's busy with Exhume, so... Yeah. And he was on Death to All as well. Yeah, they just, I think they just announced a tour. Mm. With suffocation, I think. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. That's a good album too. They've had like five different vocalists, so it's kind of a mess of their discography. But definitely, I think my... that's still that hat guy, isn't it? Hat, no, hat, pest, yeah, yeah. Black metal hat. That one has just enough top hat. Yeah. <laughs> I mentioned this band earlier, but this one sounds totally different from the one I mentioned. Lord. This one might be a tough listen if you're not a Voivod fan, but I love it. I like it better than the debut, but is it as good as Killer Technology? Not quite, but still a good record if you want some kind of discharge and fluence sloppy Canadian thrash. Real hard driving. Mm-hmm. Revisiting this one, probably my least favorite record by them, but it's still great. But Dave Ingham kind of sounds fried on this record, just a little bit. It has some really good songs on it. Yeah, it's a good good album yeah. still. Yeah. They, I think another it's another band that hasn't put out a bad album. Yeah, I think it's the production with his voice that yeah makes him sound a little dry. And then the last song, Shane Paul. Ah, right on. Bad time, time for, for democracy. democracy. Yeah, uh-huh. the last record, even though they've been a band against for like a long time, but I kind of wouldn't want them to do a new album without Jello, but hopefully they don't. But yeah, probably my favorite DK record, but I, I like all four of their albums. So yeah, good fun punk record. All right, was that the pile? Yeah, that's it. Okay, Rick. All right, yeah, I'm pretty much at the bottom of my stack. Um, I'll show two more things. Uh, so this is um, something that 
like like you were saying, Marty, with the with the what was that black metal album? Try, I forget what it was. Uh, the one you were showing earlier, uh, which you haven't spun in a while. It, it, it's it, it's oh, uh, one from Tarda, Tarda Grata. Tarda Tarda Grata. Grata. Who started with a T? Um, so this is another one. Uh, this is called Son of Her, and you know I haven't I haven't listened to this since 2020. Uh, I bought this on Bandcamp. And it's based out of Chile. It's like it's a one man thing, and uh, this is kind of atmospheric post black metal. Uh, if you if you like that kind of Alcest kind of kind of stuff, uh, this is very much in that vein, you know. Mm. So if you like that emotive uh, style of black metal, um, very well composed. This is the only thing he's put out so far, uh, so it should be about due for for another project. But this is one of those. Little gems, you know, you could you you could find that, that people put on Bandcamp. Um, that uh, I think that uh, it's definitely worth, you know, mentioning and giving some acknowledgement. And there's a lot of good stuff coming out of Chile, especially with this kind of style. Um, but you, you can tell just by looking at it, <laughs> kind of what you're getting. Uh, yeah, so I revisited it recently and forgot how good it really was. Hmm. So it's just self-titled. Okay. Fun of her. Nice. So it's really good. Again, if you like Alcest and stuff in that vein, I think this is really good. Um, and the last thing, and this is the, th I never thought I'd be picking up another one of these tapes, but uh, we all know Adam Schnell <laughs> and uh, his band, his band put out two demos uh, last year. So you guys know about his Accursed Womb uh, project. Yep. So, um, I think it was Bored from Burning. I'm trying to remember the the distro. It's under, so you know he's very analog. But I think he I think he has CDs copies of these too. Uh, so this one's called Prison Coward. So what brought my attention to this? It's pretty interesting. So um, you guys know he's based out of Philly for anybody watching, and um, you know he's in my, my neck of the woods. And you notice that this is clear. Nothing special about it, but it's missing screws. The way it's kind of uh, it's just kind of snapped in there. And it's called Prison Coward. Uh, well, two things going on with this. Uh, one, in, in prison, they don't allow records or CDs because you can make them into weapons. So this is why uh, tapes are allowed, though, and as long as there's no screws in them. So this is a prison-style cassette. Hmm. There's um, no way in hell they put that much thought into the concept of that. There's no <laughs> way. There is no way. Hmm. It's a Man. it's a short thing. It's only like, it's only like three tracks. Uh, but they they were really worried about somebody dropping the beat, I guess. Born for burning, yeah, that's what it is. Uh, <laughs> to put this out, it's um. What what caught my attention was that this is um themed based around the um. You all know about Skid Row and out in the West Coast, and it's very pretty much the soft underbelly of yeah. of America. We have a version of that here on the East Coast, and um, I passed through it many times. So Kensington Avenue, you you can YouTube it, and it's pretty much very depressing. And a lot of addicts live there, make their home there, and you don't want to be there late at night. So this, so he's kind of calling attention to the the state of despair and just how decrepit that area of the country is. And uh, so I think with, I think with that, I decided to at least show some support because I've seen it, I've been there, and um, was quite surprised that um, it made a. Uh, you know, kind of, kind of a, a demo based on what's going on, what's going on there. Uh, he did put out this too last year, Crown of Piss. <laughs> this one's very di, very DIY. So I don't think it's put out by anybody. Uh, just a green show. So, so if you guys were wondering, it's it's pretty much very very nasty death doom. Uh, you know, say what you will about Schnell, but. He's very, very into this stuff, and his, his uh, enthusiasm really comes through. So definitely uh, very disturbing <laughs> when you listen to it. Very atmospheric production, uh, but very grimy, too, at the same time. Uh, so give it a chance. A Cursed Womb, check it out. You know, I actually dig it. Right on. Is that the pile? Yep. Right on. Thought I'd end with that. Something from Philly. We made it through. Made it through the 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 storm of uh, purchases. Um, Devin and Rick. Devin, 
welcome. I was glad glad to have you on, Rick. Always yeah. a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Um, yep. Lots of cool albums. Lots of old classics and some new stuff uh, for everybody to maybe check out as well. Absolutely. Is there anything going on with your channel stuff you guys want to plug before we jump? Uh, might be seeing some upcoming reviews from me. Uh, <laughs> Doors open. You're going to start seeing a lot of promos in your inbox coming soon. <laughs> um, like I was saying earlier, more live streams. Um, got some ideas in the works. Um, I'll be appearing. Uh, I don't know if people watching, like, if you're aware, but, you know, if I'm not streaming on the weekends or the, the Saturday crew or whatever, we're usually on, on other channels. So we interchange between gas masks and hand grenades. We'll hop on uh, Logan. Um uh, and drunken metal have musings you know yep. it's been streaming so mm -hmm. we'll kind of interchange between the channels there's, there's no one particular group of us you know so besides the friday night you know there's also us so a lot of the time it's just kind of just bs hanging out or whatever but you know talk about music you guys so, are like bitcoin you're decentralized so nobody can find you at any given moment not not only that, but if you, if you like the slog, you know we can go ten hours. Yeah, as I say, we <laughs> need to do six more hours of this, or we'll, I think break the record. We do we, so we do, do have a claim to that <laughs> for the, for the longest live streams. Maybe, yeah. Good How about deal. you, Devin? Uh, I have a couple of videos planned. Maybe probably do one next weekend, but we'll see. I have a. Trying to figure out some other ideas so I don't do the same stuff over and over again, but we'll see. Okay. Alan, of course, Tuesdays. Every, every Tuesday is Let's Talk Metal has a upload. Yep. Yep. Uh, let's see. This coming Tuesday, I believe I've got a band uh, deep dive that uh, we'll go through, an old favorite. And I made something else recently, but that's a couple of weeks away. So uh, we will get to that uh pretty soon try to stay a couple of weeks ahead since every now and then i hit a week where videos just ain't happening yep well we're gonna have a busy a busy week coming up with uh heavy metallurgy more stuff coming i'm probably gonna do i've had a couple people saying they miss my collection update type stuff so i'm i've got a little mm -hmm. segment at the bottom of the playlist at the front of this page uh for my stuff so i'm gonna put i'm probably gonna shoot one of those videos at some point Good try to kick it old school and um <laughs> yeah other than that heavy metallurgy bunch of stuff coming down the pike we'll announce wednesday or uh friday soon so it'll yep. be a fun time though good time but guys again thank you it was a lot of fun as always yeah. it was it was nice doing one of these people like the the what's spinning and me and Alan didn't have to listen to anything we didn't really necessarily want to <laughs> as like extensively. More, like more blue oyster call. Oh yeah. Or yeah. Exactly. I was gonna say you have, yeah, you have twenty three sacks and albums that can get listening to. No, no, he, no. He has twenty four sacks and albums to listen to. <laughs> actually only twenty because I own four. I know I'm pretty familiar with those. So well see you're one I'm, sixth of the way there. It's it's Everything's You're coming up. Fifteen percent yeah. there. Absolutely. Just, just a reminder: if you're going to check out uh, IAT, just get track two. If you don't like sax, other than that, it's pretty good. Just thought I'd reiterate, reiterate that. <laughs> hey, um, north of the Rockies, still pretty new to the channel. Have you ever done a what's spinning with sci-fi? We've been talking about doing a sci-fi themed. We have, have. We haven't. Have we done it? We have not done a. Sci We've talked about it. Yeah, I we think. Did, uh, I think Matt did a while ago. He did. Matt did one uh, last year about sci-fi, but yeah, we've thought about doing like a robots night or uh, yeah, a sci-fi night or fantasy type we, we night. A cool, so it was a three-part thing. Right? It was, it was sci-fi, fantasy, horror, horror. Um, and horror. Mm -hmm. We've yeah. already done the horror. Yep, uh, yep. We've done that one recently, but yeah, uh, we've uh, we will definitely be breaking out the robots sooner or later. Well, thanks for joining the channel, North of the Rockies. Good to have you. We really appreciate Robots it. Robots being included in cyborgs. Like, so we'll see Rogue Mail then. I'm just... Everybody check out Kellen's new uh, avatar. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> what do they got here? Oh, man. Evil KFC. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. Killing for company. That, uh, that works on multiple levels. I like it. 
Well, anyway, everybody, thanks. Cheers. Um, guys, hang out for a second, and we will see you. Well, there's a premiere on Monday, 10 a.m. Review for some symphonic power metal, as I repeatedly say the, the name of the album wrong. So get ready for that. Cheers. <laughs>